Boom. Got it. <laughs> Suck it, Jason. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. Today is Saturday, September 5th, and we are Never Free to Play, a podcast where we talk about all the video games we wish we were playing. I'm one of your hosts, Karch Palashti, joined by my co-host, Jit. No, Sean Mybers? Robo Sean is back online. <gasps> if you decide you like us and want to know what Sean did with the body, you can find us at neverfreetoplay.com, patreon.com slash neverfreetoplay, or on all the other social media where we are Never Free to Play. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, feedback, please send it to us at neverfreetoplay at gmail.com. Sean, how are you doing? Uh, you know, I feel like I got some uh, big shoes I have to fill. Uh, was, was, was happier <laughs> as a guest star instead of a co-host. Exactly. You, have all, you had all the fun and none of the responsibility, but now you're on the line. You're on the hook for a good time. So, um, and, But it's okay, because Jason's got small feet. I'm thinking, I'm assuming anyway, <laughs> and he's probably wearing them itty bitty size sevens. Yeah, probably. So, but no, so. he's got something he's got to take care of this week. So Sean so graciously decided he would step in. Not decided. We asked him, and he graciously <laughs> said yes. He would. He would fill in for Jason, am, so we could still get an episode up. So we are still going to be 28 for 28. I am uh, episode 20. Happily recording from my parents' house instead of a hotel this week. So I, I think that's a step up for me. I I, per- I don't know how it'll sound on the end, but like I think it already sounds way better. I don't know what's different, but if you ever record in the future, we'll see how it how it comes out. But I think it'll be I think it'll be good. So oh, yeah, if 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 you guys never find the body, I'll have to actually get some re- legitimate uh, audio recording equipment. That's fine. We'll just use Jason's. Oh yeah, we're gonna do that. It's Perfect. Gonna, I'm just gonna steal his life, <laughs> wife. And dog. And then you'll have three dogs, though. Do you want three dogs? My parents literally offered me their two dogs and my older brother's dog. So uh, <gasps> I'm currently in and a Tilly house. Tilly and Scruffy. With, uh, yeah, I, I'm at a house with Tilly, Scruffy, Reef, Oliver, and Sherry. I basically have a verifiable pack. <laughs> Lord, Howl at the moon. Lord, Lord, help the man who breaks into this house and is snuggled to death by all the super friendly dogs. <laughs> they, well, some of them are fierce looking, but some of them are not. So no. All right, let's dive in. Housekeeping, as usual, like, sub, follow, email, tweet, all those fun things. Let us know you're listening, and uh, we'll we'll comment back. And you know, we might uh, Sean might find himself in some sort of accident, and you might find yourself on this podcast with me, yours truly. So you never know. Robo Sean, uh, we is have a sh- to critical hits and cannot be killed. <laughs> we'll see about that. Everyone's got a weakness. We got one shout out to one Kyle Mybers. I don't know if you're listening, but you followed me on Twitter and I appreciate that. No relation though, right? I don't think you know that guy. No, nah, like, it's not like I'm related to every other Mybers in the country or anything. Nah, like, nah. Just some just some weirdo with your last name. Yeah. Thinking he was about throwing us. Born like own. five years after me to the same parents, but not not anyone that I know. No. Nah. Uh, corrections. We don't have correction music because Jason's got the button and I've misplaced the corrections music button, <laughs> but we do have one small one that Sean submitted. He said that Respawn's new Medal of Honor is VR only, which is a little disappointing because, not that I was going to play it, but I'm definitely not going to play it now. Well, I'm particularly sad because I was the one who made this mistake, and also I was hoping to play another Respawn game because I'm still playing yeah. Titanfall 2, or will be when I get my Xbox. You never know when Titanfall, Titanfall 3 is coming, so... I mean, it it could be like when they released uh, Apex Leg- or, yeah, Apex Legends, and they just mm-hmm. they'll just shadow drop it and be like, "Oh, by the way, game." And yeah. Speaking of, um, you such a respawn fan. I don't know if I've ever gotten your thoughts on Apex Legends. Real quick, how do you feel about that game? So I only played like two rounds of it. Um, it was kind of weird mm-hmm. going to it after playing and, and playing a lot of Titanfall two because I mean it's it's fast, but nothing's as fast as Titanfall two, and I. I definitely got like like I'm a I'm I've become like a first person shooter speed junkie after playing Titanfall two. So sure, um, sure. When it comes, yeah, because I've played I played Battlegrounds, I've played Fortnite, and, and I've played Apex, and I, I haven't played any of them extensively. But I would I, I I like I like Apex Legends the most, and I like what they did with the with the setup. Uh, I have not played Call of Duty Warzone because uh, I just don't play Call of Duties. Sure. I'm, I'm cool. in the military. Right. I don't need to play a military game. You're living it, baby. Yeah, exactly. So it's a lot more oh. boring than uh, Call of Duty is. <laughs> Give me that. That's because that's they don't make a Coast Guard Battle Royale. <laughs> they totally should. We should, Save we all should of design the fish. that. 
Uh, good stuff. All right. So let's dive into some news. We've only got two major items, but they're pretty pretty meaty. So we'll get to the first one, which is a little smaller, a little me-centric. It's Karch's time. Zendikar Rising, the new Magic the Gathering set was announced. The premiere came out. There was a little tw- uh, Twitch uh, stream about it. So buckle up. We're going to run through all these fun new things they've got. Um, so if you're if you're new to Magic, what they do is every th- three months, like four times a year, basically, there is a new set of cards that numbers in the somewhere in like the like, 150 to 250 i don't i think it varies from set to set but you get a bunch of new cards and specifically what happens in september is there is a standard set there's a rule set of cards you can play with in standard that will rotate out and these new cards will come in and replace those so that's happening now and that's always a big shake up because a lot of decks you get used to using are no longer viable because certain cards in them get kicked out and you have to go play in a different mode and so it's always fun to be able to like have to think about new stuff and you get to use the new things and it's it's cool. So we've got two recur- returning mechanics. One is Kicker, which is basically I can cast a card and do a thing or I can pay an additional cost to do more things. Oh, um, and cool. it basically, yeah, it gives you uh, flexibility on the card. And what it does is it usually takes a, a familiar effect and makes it a little bit more expensive on the front end because you do have that flexibility on the back end. And then the other one is Landfall. So Magic is played with um, these cards called Lands. Lands are your resource that help you... uh, The resource you use to cast other cards. And so if you don't have any Lands, you don't have any mana, and you can't cast any cards. So what happens with Landfall is a certain card might be on the board, and then when you play a land, a thing happens. And Lands are always coming down in Magic, and there's cards that put more more than one land down in a turn, and so some crazy shenanigans can start happening. Um, so that's a fun one that, uh, that I'm excited to, pl- to play around with because I've actually only been playing Magic since March and I haven't gotten to see these before. I have played like, uh, just enough Magic from the brief time I played it in uh, middle school that I'm actually understanding yeah. all this. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah, it's working out. So yeah, and <laughs> if you're interested, Magic Arena is their um, their like their online client that you can play Magic you know d- digitally with anybody and that is the free-to-play version. There is a not free to play version, which I do not recommend because it's very expensive and it is also not as uh, streamlined. This one's a lot more akin to Hearthstone if you've ever seen or played okay. that. But Karch, can um, I play it on my phone? Not yet, but soon because it's coming to mobile. What? Now they've been saying that. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> and presumably all smart devices. So your iPads, your phones, your Androids. Um, Long time. Uh, collectible card game enthusiast uh, Day9 uh, also known as Sean Plotz that's his real name uh, he showed up randomly he's like hey I've got it on my phone he's like can we see it he's like no bye <laughs> he's like walked off the set to go play it some more it was pretty funny it was like um, the, the Twitch stream I, I think I saw news on like two days ago where they had a PS5 in the background the whole time and it turned out to be a cake uh-huh. at the end ah, that's hilarious because of all the cake stuff mm, what's a PS4 cake or a PS5 cake taste like tastes like confusion because we don't know how much it costs yeah, but it's... but yeah no they've been saying that it's going to come to mobile for a while other people are like it's never going to happen it's impossible but it's not and it is happening but presumably much sooner now since they bothered to bring it up officially on one of their streams um so i can't wait because i um i really like playing but it is kind of a time sink sometimes to get in your daily wins and just kind of mess around for like an hour or two and it would be really cool if I could do that on my phone, like when I'm in the kitchen or when I'm in bed at night, instead of kind of like devoting my, my lunch hour, which is what I usually do since I've been at home, which is nice, but I'd rather be playing something else when I'm on my lunch. Yeah. All right. They've got a new mechanic called party, uh, for lack of a better term. And basically, it's going to function like a D&D party. Now, Magic is owned by Wizards. And D&D is owned by Wizards of the Coast as well. So they're just kind of putting the best of both worlds together here with this. And so what you'll do is you'll have um, a warrior, a wizard, a rogue, and a cleric, which is like that classic D&D party archetype. And if you have one of each on the board, then you can trigger certain things that need a party, a full party on the board to trigger. And usually that's like reduced cost or a special effect as another creature or spell enters the battlefield. So that's kind of like huh what's that about but it's it's also pretty cool and um, then finally say, the it, other new mechanic sound pretty cool sounds yeah. like you know, I, big, I, I imagine to see some you know some pretty crazy combos coming out of that 
Yes, because there's an interest. There's a couple interesting cards um, where one card, one character, or sorry, excuse me, creature is all four types. Not at the same time, but it, it's whichever one you choose it to be huh. at that time. So it can kind of fill as like a wild card, and a lot of really funny memes where like people are drawing little comics where like druids and other pretty popular but not quite as stapled like you know character classes are off to the side looking real sad that they weren't invited to the party (laughs) because you know like they're great like bards are as old as like you know like they're not as old as rogues and wizards but bards and druids and uh, paladins basically they're all just as iconic and yet nope they're not invited I don't feel bad for you, monk, though. Nobody likes you, monk. No, nobody does. Funnily enough, there probably is like a monk creature type in magic already. So, probably. And then the last new mechanic is a modal card. Uh, it is a card with two sides, which I don't think is especially new. I can't remember if that's new or not. I want to say it is. I want to say like the idea of having a card that has like basically like what, for instance, one side would be a land and the other side would be a spell. And you can pick when you play it which one it's going to be, which adds a huge amount of flexibility because, like I said earlier, you can't play anything if you don't have the lands on the board. And so a big part of magic is like, hope you drew some lands. And so you kind of have to, like, you know, you play a little statistic game when you're building your decks. Like, "Mm, should I include 17 or 20? Because I really want to make sure I have enough lands to cast a spell. Well, now you can stuff your deck with these double side cards, which are lands and spells. And it's like, like I said, it's pretty unprecedented. So this could break the game completely or kind of just fizzle out into nothing. Uh, Is is magic, is there a, a limit or a requirement for how many cards your deck has to have? Or is it a range? In certain modes, um, 60 minimum is a pretty typically what you'll see. Some of them need 100, and then they can only have like one of each card. Like you can't have duplicates. Others they let you have up to four uh, duplicates of any given card. Okay. But yeah, 60 is 60 cards in a deck is typically what you'll find, and that can range anywhere between 17 lands and 24. With you know those being the really high and low ends respectively. But. Let's see. Well, oh, and the last thing. So they um, they also took time. So this was focused around the new set, and they gave they showed off a bunch of cards. Zendikar Rising. Woohoo! We've been to Zendikar a few times in other expansions and sets. So we're returning to this place, this setting, um, in the Magic universe, and that's exciting. But they also took time to announce their upcoming things, or excuse me, their upcoming sets and where they'll be taking place for 2021. Because this is the last set in 2020. And I think it's the summer set. So it'll come out anywhere between like June and August. Is going to be D&D Forgotten Realms. And that is cool because I love D&D. That will be awesome. I yeah. want I want my, my Minsk and my Boo destroying my enemies. I saw a reference on Reddit when that was announced. That there were like at least two comments like Minsk and Boo will ride again or something <laughs> like that. So and you're not the only Baldur's Gate stand team fan. aside. It w- it does and it will. So yeah, here's hoping because like a like a big thing is uh, legendary creatures are usually these cards with a very specific character. Like the character like has a name, and so that would be a perfect opportunity to use someone like um like min- like a combo of Minsk and Boo, yeah. the comma the legendary heroes or something like that. And they could be red fighters who do crazy things when they enter the battlefield. I, I, I was so. actually reading up on this, and I found it interesting. So, you know, several times, you know, the different settings and worlds for Magic has actually come over into they've 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 done like small, I guess, free mm-hmm. campaign setting books for D anD. d So this is, I, I guess, the first time they've reversed that, and D anD. d has gone into Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, so. I also noticed that. I think most recently they did the. It was either Ravnica or the Theros, which uh, the Theros is like kind of like their Greek themes. Basically, it, it, it's just ancient Greece, except they use different names for the gods and all the other like uh, mythical heroes. But I remember seeing like a and d book where they just took that setting. And like you said, they made like little adventure modules and campaign settings yeah. and stuff about it. So, yeah, that was cool because they use um, in Theros specifically. And I think because I think it's the same as Forgotten Realms. The gods come into being basically by being worshipped by people. Yep. And so basically here, human mortal humans were elevated to god like over the over millennia but it happens eventually and there's this plot at one point where you know the zeus guy is like afraid that this one person that he used in a previous set is gonna like get too much adoration from the people over him and she might rise up to god status and then so he gets jealous and he throws her into the underworld and it's this whole this it's this whole thing 
So, and, uh, and then that's pretty much how God of War starts. That's exactly. I know exactly. <laughs> Zeus always getting himself into some trouble, whether he's calling himself Zeus or not. Uh, I love that game. Uh, just love it so much. So Zendikar Rising will launch on Arena. That's the online digital component or online digital platform on the 17th. And then it comes to paper where people can buy it at their local game shops sometime like a week later, the 20 something. It's not very far off though. Cannot wait. All right. I have stolen that conversation long enough. We'll get into something everybody can talk (laughs) about. Everybody wants to talk about. And that is the Mario 35th anniversary Nintendo Directs. Sean, did you watch it? Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't. I then like got <gasps> online and I saw that, like, hey, Nintendo had this direct about Mario. And I was like, ah, oh, I probably should have got that. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? You should have on any normal circumstance. But here's what happened. It was Thursday, I believe, that they dropped it. Yep. And it, much like everything else they've been doing, and f- up until now, I could understand it, but this was a shadow drop. They, I just saw a notification pop up on my phone and it might have been live like that moment but for like they didn't tell anybody was happening and so the world got to find out at the same time around like 9 30 to 10 30 in the morning on thursday eastern time that there was this big 35th anniversary mario direct and up until now i was like yeah shadow drop everything baby but like i don't know i feel like they could have warned us how do you feel about something this kind of like monumental or not even monumental because it's not it's not the biggest deal, but it's it's fun, you know? Like, I feel like everybody should be able to gather around Mario for his birthday, right? Yeah, that's so, yeah, I knew from just early in the year that this was going to be the 35th anniversary, and so everyone expected something to, to happen. And so I, I, mm-hmm. I honestly just was expecting that they were going to announce, I mean, kind of like, uh, you know, what, I mean, what we're getting to talk to with, like, the, the 3D remasters. Yeah, for, mm-hmm. for an entire event, them not to hype up at all. It's just, like, once again, Nintendo just being nintendo and and being like because this is what you expect us to do we won't do it even though that would make the most sense right just can't can't put a finger on them can't get a finger on that pulse it's like are they are they alive who knows Mm, excuse me but oh man i haven't been taking notes Ugh, it'll be fun trial by fire okay so uh so they announced a bunch of stuff most of it things you can purchase uh which i thought was like eh Usually people throw free stuff at you with these kind of events, but that's fine. We'll get to that. A lot of weird stuff. Yeah. So they started off with a Game & Watch device. So it's going to be a handheld device similar to the old school Game & Watch um, devices, which would basically have a single or maybe sometimes like two or three um, games on it in the style of the quote unquote Game & Watch style. And if you ever had one of those, um, what are they, those Tiger Electronics you could play like Ninja Gaiden and it would yeah, be very like almost stop animation, but digital. And yeah. Yeah. They were very, they were, uh, yeah, it was you know, basically a bunch of just LEDs that lit up as I recall. And, and you know, they create different mm-hmm. patterns. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't really animated. No, not even. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now, and I mean, so this basically looks it, to be like, yeah, this is going to be like an actual little miniature, I guess, like almost like a miniature NES that, with a screen that only plays with this and, uh, uh, the, the lost levels. Or yeah, so it'll be the original Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. 2 Brothers. in Japan. Right, and then Lost Levels, like Sean said. And it also will have some of the, like, like, like in three or four of the original um, Game & Watch games that Mario was featured in. Huh. Um, I didn't catch the price on this. Yeah, I didn't but... either. The, the only other news I saw coming out of this was apparently people were like, hey, the color of Mario is wrong. And then I went into <laughs> a long technical art- article that talked about how the, the old NES, it outputted the signal to the t- your TVs and your old cathode mm-hmm. ray tube TVs back in the day would interpret that signal. So like depending upon what brand of TV you bought, apparently the colors in Super Mario Bros. could be totally different. That's crazy. So That's I now really know that random fact. And so does the rest of the world because everybody listens to this podcast. Exactly. You're welcome um, at Trivia Fans. <laughs> but it doesn't seem... Like it, it's it is strictly a collector's item. Like we've played oh, this yeah. game, these games, both those games, a million times, and no one really wants to play the game and watch games. Well, and, and, you know, what, what annoyed me, you, you talked about you, you know, it's a big anniversary like this. You, you expect something free, and it's like you know, given the number of times that Nintendo has released the original Super Mario Bros. in some form that you could buy, it's like mm-hmm. just thirty fifth birthday. Just 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 put you know, hey, for the next for the month of September, you can download it free off of the the Switch store and let everyone just play Mario again. 
Like right, yeah. Buy a, buy a collector's item that a hand, you know a few hundred people I'm sure will end up buying, and that'll that'll be the end of it. Fifty dollars. That's how much it'll cost to be able to play Super Mario Brothers on a handheld. If assuming you don't already have the Switch, because you can already do that with Switch on. Like, so, like I said, it's just a collector's item. It's gonna let you feel like you've got an NES in your hand or NES controller in your hands, and and not much else to that. The next item they had up was Super Mario 3D World um, is coming to the Switch. So a port of the Wii U game that came out in 2013 or 12, 13, 2013. It'll be coming February 12th, 2021. So that's February 12th of next year. And it will be ha- it will have new content called Bowser's Fury. So what they had here is after the main trailer of the Super Mario 3D World, they cut to this kind of spooky, rainy, wet, dark lightning thunder storm scene uh as it panned through it's hard to say it could have been just one gigantic level or it could have been like this hub world it, yeah. it, it, or a combo of this either um and then the 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 words bowser's fury in like the kind of like classic bowser font came up um so not sure what that is probably going to be like really hard levels or like just you know more content to the base game to actually make porting and purchasing it worth the $60 um kind of far out though it's that's five months away basically I wasn't expecting it to be quite so far away yeah I mean you're yeah well it's I guess closer to Mario's anniversary than 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 you know than other times next year could be it it seems weird to me that Mm -hmm. you're essentially in the what will be the 36th year of Mario when when something for his 35th anniversary comes out right the uh did you ever get a chance to play this uh no, because I, I never had a Wii U. Um, I was mm-hmm. I was actually thinking while you're talking about this that I, I wonder I wonder how far into the Switch's life before essentially every Wii U game will be ported over and I'll be able to take my pick of any of the game those games to play. Um, you know it should have happened by now in my opinion, and we've talked about that a bunch. <laughs> it's funny this like this is Nintendo kind like I kind of got my monkey's paw wish granted. Because, like, every other week, I'm always, Nintendo, get your old games on your new consoles and make it permanent, blah, 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 blah. Well, they're finally doing that, and they're charging an arm and a leg for it. So and, I got what and, I wanted. And, and apparently, you need to act fast. And it, Yeah, well, <laughs> this one isn't limited, but as we'll find out, some of them are. We're going to save that for last, though, because there's probably the most that we can talk about regarding that. And that's what they did, too. They saved it for last. Um, next, we had probably the most bizarre thing. And that's saying a lot <laughs> that they that they announced. And that's Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. So it opens up some ki- the the trailer for this opens up some kids sitting on his couch at home, and he's playing what looks like a Mario Kart game on his Switch. And you see it, and but it's not like any Mario Kart you've seen. So it's some kind of new version of it. But Mario is driving around on a track that clearly is in the same room that the kid is in. So he's just like driving around behind the couch on the floor. And you're like, what's going on? And then it like pans over, pans out, and there is an RC car of Mario in his cart with a what it clearly is like some sort of like, you know, photographic camera capture device on the back of it as it's going around the house. And so basically what you're going to be able to do is you're going to drive this car around. It's going to map out a track and then you're going to be race. You're going to be able to race on those tracks on your switch and presumably share it with people I, I i don't know i haven't looked up too much about it because i have absolutely no desire to purchase this because it is a hundred dollars for that little car and presumably the software that you need to play the game as well um but it's interesting i have never seen anything quite like this in the console gaming space have you seen anything like this before sean no nah, this i mean yeah you had some of the stuff there with the what was what was the nintendo thing with the cardboard the uh labo yeah the labo where they, they had something where you know you could use the the infrared you know scanner on uh on on, on you know on, on the on the the controller that would allow you to make a little car and drive it around but nothing 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 quite as you know as essentially yeah you're right combining an, an old rc car with a video game yeah and it it looked it looked fun enough like i don't even know though like would you have wanted this as a kid like five ten fifteen years old like anywhere in those ranges i probably yeah after you know, after yeah, I, I played a <laughs> lot of mario kart on the super nintendo um mm-hmm. and this would have appealed to you know what it would have been like five to ten year old sean during the time that i had the super nintendo so i mean this and, and i had rc cars at the time too so yeah this this would have been like combining my two worlds 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure I would have loved it. I'm sure like my dad would have hated it as I had this car zipping around the house because <laughs> presumably I can't imagine this thing has great range. So I wouldn't have been able to take it out into the, you know, the, the cul-de-sac out front and to the street and, and done, and done. Right. This. Uh, that would have been cool though. Yeah. It does make me think that like, yeah, maybe Nintendo should think about making like a Mario Kart maker. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah. They need to do that yesterday. And this is a poor substitute. So Nintendo, take your notes. Sean Wait. gives you all all he he releases all the rights to his idea that he just had and he wants you to do something with it. So go ahead and make the Mario Kart maker cuz I would buy that. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, yeah, it was an interesting, like, I remember it came up, I was like, okay, maybe this, and I'm sure a lot of people, like, so Mario Kart 8 came out for the Wii U, did incredibly successful, even on, you know, what is essentially a dead console, even, like, you know, when it came out. They re-released it very early on in the Switch's life cycle, the very, th- that same year as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which was all the content that had come out for the Wii U, packaged in a nice little thing. Um, and since then, there's been nothing as far as like what could potentially come in in the series. Not that, I mean, I'm not personally like begging for a new Mario Kart. If I want to play Mario Kart, I'll just go play eight because I barely touched it, you know, even after I bought it. And there's still a lot of fun stuff for me to discover. But, you know, to be fair, some people love it and they want some new stuff or they played it when it came on the Wii U. And so when I watched this, I was like, oh, okay, here, finally some new Mario Kart stuff that isn't the mobile. And no, no, (laughs) no, it's not. (laughs) So we'll see how this pans out. I can't imagine... I don't know what their expectation is for something like this either. Like when you're charging a hundred dollars for, you know, a remote control car, what exactly are you expecting as a console game maker publisher? (laughs) I don't know. Like, it's just like this fun thing they made just because it's the anniversary, I guess. I'm I'm beginning to think that like Nintendo has figured out the whole concept of like whales and they're just like, all right, we got to make all these amiibos <laughs> and these other random yeah. things because we got that 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 select fan base out there that will literally buy anything that we put these characters on. Yeah, they're basically playing like, how how high can we go? How far can we push this? Well, and it, they're, they're, I've read an article. This was some time ago, but it, it talked about like the, the a little bit about the Nintendo culture. And one of the things mm-hmm. they noted was that you know Nintendo's not mainline games, so. Yeah, you know, actually nowadays, I think Kirby actually falls into this nowadays, but, you know, like, or the Mario Tennises, you know, the things that aren't, you know, the big Zeldas, the big Marios, uh, you know, the, the, the Metroids. But Nintendo uses, like, their younger, newer people to develop those, and I guess the way it's gone is the, the way those people found to get noticed and moved on to the big projects is essentially to do something crazy and hope that it pans, it, that it, like, it, it gets picked up as popular because then that'll get you enough credit to get elevated to building a mainline game. And I'm wondering, Interesting. I'm wondering how many of these ideas that come out are are born out of like, all right, just figure out something. If it's successful, I'll be able to work on the next Legend of Zelda. That's a very like I've never I've heard a lot of things about Nintendo. I've never heard that because that's essentially what you hear about Google too. Like yeah. Google, like people, they do a thing to get noticed, to get promoted, and then that thing dies because they're gone from that project. And the only like like the passion was simply born out of a personal desire to get further in the company i don't know that's a little mean you know, surely somebody thought, thought that google stadia was a cool idea but clearly not cool <laughs> enough <laughs> because you know that's the idea is that it was whoever headed that up just wanted to continue you know their trajectory in that company but that's interesting that nintendo would employ a, a similar tactic and it, it, whether that's intentional me, it, or it, not it somewhat explains why you get some of these these smaller nintendo games that are just like do totally bonkers things it's like well i guess mm-hmm. you know vice just making something you know like like the previous ones but you know incrementally better i think they get you know it sounds like they get rewarded more for doing something considered more innovative they do love their innovation they do i love it too i love their innovation but i also love the same old same old and i don't think they've ever struck a balance i'm never getting both at the same time i should say i not in the same game but like give me a new Mario game that's weird and give me a regular Mario game that's safe because then I can enjoy both of them without feeling like I'm missing out on the other. So 
Ah, uh, so that was Mario Kart Live. Next up is Super Mario Bros. 35. So this was another rehash of the original Super Mario Brothers, but this time it's got a Battle Royale spin, very similar to Tetris 99, except instead of 99 people, there's 35 people playing the same Mario level at the same time. And there's points and time, and you have ways to, like, attack your yeah, opponents. Yeah, you drop an enemy or something on your opponents. Right, like you can choose basically like a like a category. Like one of them was attack, one of them was time, one of them was something else, and then I think there was like a random one. And then basically, again, I I, I wish I'd played more Tetris ninety nine because I'd probably understand more of the idea that they were going for this game as well. But I haven't, and so I can only like guess. But basically, you will have some sort of agency as far as how you will, you know, <coughs> knock your pl- uh, opponents out of the game. And so basically, you want to be the last one standing. Yeah. Like any other Battle Royale. So, yeah. T- so, the way Tetris 99 worked is, uh, you know, if you can knock out four rows all at once by, by using the straight bar, that's, like, you know, considered the, the ultimate Tetris move. Every time that you did that, you got, like, you got essentially a screw-up that you could send to another character, like, another person. And what that caused is that person it instantly dropped whatever piece they had down, mm-hmm. which would then, you know, screw cool. up their placement and all that. So, it's, yeah, it's all, it's, it's basically you're just trying to make a good enough combos to then be able to screw up um whoever whoever you're you're up against gotcha all right so that sounds like it'll be fun and i'll I'll definitely check it out it's available through nintendo switch online so another reason to purchase that it'll be out soon i don't think it was out that day i think it's out like maybe next week or the week after but it will only be available until march 31st to 31st 2021 so that's march 31st next year we have a basically a six-month window to play this game which is interesting um, and it's going to get more interesting when we find out <coughs> other things that they've limited, uh, which we'll get to right now. Uh, Super Mario All-Stars will be available on the SNES, is now available on the SNES um, online service. So if you have that and you want to go play inferior versions of the games, in my opinion, I do not like this. Like, a lot of people love the um, the Super Mario All-Stars pack-in. That was So what this was, if you don't know, Super Nintendo had it, a It was game. the first remaster. It was the first, the first remaster. And what it did is it took the first three. Um, so it took Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. And as Lost they were Levels. released in the United States. Exactly. As they were released in the United States. And Lost Levels, which was the Japanese Mario Super Mario Brothers sequel. And then they labeled it Lost Levels in America. Because so remember, four folks, games. Japan is much better at video games than us. And we, as Americans, could never beat Lost Levels. I don't know what who was smoking what that they thought that Super Mario World or Super Mario Brothers 2 is easy because I've never even come close to beating that game. (laughs) That might be the only Mario that I haven't, uh, you know, the only 2D, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo era Mario I haven't beat, come to think of it. It's hard, dude. It's It's got a bunch of crazy mechanics and they like, it's fun and zany, but like, it's also not at the same time because it's just not at its core a Mario game. You know, over time, it basically retroactively becomes one. So not to get too deep into that history, but that game, Super Mario Brothers 2 in America, and this is a little factoid that most people know about now, but basically there was a game in Japan called Doki Doki Panic. And it is that's it is Super Mario Brothers 2. So then what they did was they took that game for some reason. They said, this is the one, and we're going to put Mario characters in it instead of the, like, I don't know, vaguely, like, middle eastern indian turban wearing man he basically looks like toad without the without like you know the mushroom circles on his head yeah um they added some different characters in the form of mario characters and so that's where you get all these kind of classic things where peach floats that's because that's what the original character did in doki doki panic and luigi kicks his legs again he's a little taller because again the thing that that's the what the character did in doki doki panic and that's and you know history was basically rewritten from that moment on yeah which is it is it is really interesting that this not mario game has created things that have become mario canon but yeah shy guys wouldn't exist without this game uh birdo would not exist without was, that game was, that, really i thought shy guy originated in yoshi island huh no yeah shy guys came in that or maybe they were awesome. called shy guys but they definitely looked exactly like them so. okay also, Yoshi Island, anyway, underrated game. Fantastic game. Very underrated. Very good. Very hard. Like, very again, hard. Not, not an easy game. Um, <laughs> not available. Or is No, it is available on the, um, on the virtual console service yeah, on Nintendo Switch Online. No, another one of those games that Tiny Sean just beat his head against until he beat it, along with Link to the Past. Yep. Yep. 
A lot of collectibles. That one's fun too. But the reason I said that they're inferior is because they changed the graphic and art style completely to look like nothing you've seen before. Like they don't like they don't even really look like Super Mario World. And so like like Super Mario Brothers three is one of my favorite Mario art styles of all time. And it looks nothing like the not nothing like, but it looks so vastly different from the original that it's just I, I want nothing to do with it. So I'd rather go play the original, which you can on the Nintendo Switch online service. That's the other thing is all these games are already available on the NES online service. So you're only going to be playing this for nostalgia because you already had access to the games prior to today. The, the one thing Very I will odd. say is when this game came out on the Super Nintendo, it did have a benefit over at least the original Mario Bros. And I think Mario, Mario Bros. 2 and that you could save your progress. Yes, that is true. I forgot yeah. about that. that. It did have a save function. That was the only way I was able to be able to beat Super Mario Bros. growing up, because otherwise you were, you know, leaving your console turned on when you went out to dinner you know, or went to dinner with your folks and then hoping that the mm-hmm. power didn't go out when Florida's afternoon thunderstorm came rolling through. And that's assuming you didn't die, because, you know, once you lost your lives, it was game over back to the beginning. Yeah, so whereas this would kick you back to, worry to, about. The, to the stage one of whatever world you're on. Uh, yes, exa- which is exactly what um, Super Mario World does. Well, rather, the last save point, which is usually after a castle, which is usually the first level. Yeah. All right. But yeah, if you like that, if you've got nostalgia for it, it'll be there, so you can go play it. And then now, the the final piece, the final announcement in the video, uh, the biggest thing that everybody had been rumored, leaking, and talking about for like the last, I don't know, three, four months at this time, is the Super Mario, and it was a fun segue, a Super Mario 3D All-Stars coming september 18th this year (laughs) i had it written down wrong and so that is super mario 64 super mario sunshine and super mario galaxy but not galaxy 2 and And so this was yeah a lot of people mad about so two people mad about three things because again of course why wouldn't they be mad and you know what for once i'm kind of on board uh first thing $60 $60 for three pretty old games. Galaxy came out in like what, 2008? Yeah. yeah would that's, have had that's a, or very a, late 2000. Pretty early or a pretty mid mid time I think Wii game or early Wii game. Yeah. So so the oh, the most recent title has came out 13 years ago. Um you can currently yeah. buy Galaxy on the Wii U eShop for $20. Huh. And so like all this, like, it, it, the value conversation becomes very interesting now because I think you can buy 64 for 10. And so, where does that leave Sunshine? And why does this thing cost $60? Because here's point number two people are angry. Clearly, Sunshine is everyone's favorite Mario Kart. I mean, come on. Well, it, uh, it, it wasn't like it drove people insane when it came out. It's definitely the hardest one to play out of these three. So, there is that kind of, you know, like, well, you can't officially easily play it, except for now you can. Um, but the second point people are angry about is that they did almost nothing to this game. These games, yeah. Um, Sixty four is going to be in seven twenty p, but it's still going to have a four three aspect ratio. Sunshine will be in ten eighty, but still be thirty frames per second. And then Galaxy will finally be like the most, um, the highest fidelity. It will be full H or full HD ten eighty p, and it will be sixty frames per second, which will be cool to play that game. You know, as as good as you can. Um, but what, what, what drove you, me nuts about this too, though, is like, I remember when Odyssey came out and I got my hands on Odyssey mm-hmm. and it was, you know, the, you know, cause I, I had played, I played Super Mario 64. I played Sunshine I, I, and I hadn't played a 3D Mario since. And I looked mm-hmm. at Odyssey and it was, you know, it was amazing to realize all of the various jump moves, you know, the crouch, little backflip jump, you know, the, the, the jump three times long jump, you know, yeah. the, like crouch, he slides and gets like a power jump. All those moves that were from Mario, Super Mario 64 were still there. So, it's, And then most of the enemies and all that from Mario 64 had to have gotten recreated somewhere in, in, in Odyssey. Like I feel like it would not have been that hard to have recreated Super Mario 64, at least, in the Odyssey engine and, and, and just basically remove Cappy and, and, you know, and you would have had a game that looked as good as a current game. Yeah. Did you ever get to the end of, of Odyssey? No, I think I had the last like quarter of the game to play still. Okay, so I got a minor spoiler if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. it it's, it's, it's relevant to your point, so shut your ears for like 30 seconds. After you beat the game, you go to Peach's Castle. 
and <laughs> you not you don't get to go in uh, if you go inside it's very brief but you get to go in the courtyard and the surrounding area and they do a little addition to it but they they literally do what you just said I mean, Cappy's there, but they literally do what you just said. There's a little more pomp and circumstance to it. Like, they they add it just a so, tiny bit. Yoshi's on the roof. Yoshi's on the roof, dude, just like he was in 64. Okay. So, <laughs> like, like so, so it's so even... Like, it would not have been that hard to do it if you've already got Peach's Castle made. I mean, the, the, the question how hard would it have been to do is always a loaded one. But yeah. the answer is, is it impossible or is it even unfeasible? And that answer is absolutely not. Yeah. It would have been super feasible to give these a graphical overhaul and really bring them into the modern age and make this a really amazing product to celebrate 35 years of your most valuable asset. Um, but you didn't. And then you've got people like Activision who are literally the devil when it comes to gaming publishers making games like Crash Bandicoot, funding and publishing games like Spyro Trilogy Remastered, which are full graphical remasters from the ground up, and they're selling them three games bundled just like before, but only for forty dollars. That or you got what I mean, wasn't it some of the uh like the pre order stuff you could have gotten for either Wind Waker or Twilight Princess was literally like a twentieth anniversary Legend of Zelda disc that had like mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time and every Zelda before that on like two disc. That was a- it, I don't think it had Link to the Past, but yeah, it had the original two. You could play the yeah. original um the original two Zeldas from the NES and you had that master mission, what is it called? Master mode? Master quest. Where it was like Master Quest for Ocarina of Time, which was a brand new thing that had never existed. Yep. And basically for the cost of like, you know, it essentially you you had to do something that essentially would have been like a $25 value. Yeah. But you got it for free. And it was just like, and it was an amazing deal. And like, look, I'm going to buy this because I haven't played Sunshine in forever and I haven't played Galaxy in forever. And I haven't played 64 in forever. And it's going to be, like I said, I'm, I am going to put my money where my mouth is in the sense that I've been asking Nintendo to do something like this for a while. And I think it's too expensive. I don't think they did enough. But I still enjoy these games. They are s- seminal classic titles, and there's three of them in one. And it's like, and like, are these games not worth sixty dollars? All three of them together? It's like, really? These are these are classic games that everybody loves, and some people might have played them too many times. And if you've played them too many times, don't buy this package and just don't play them. You know, it's like here's here's me, you know, playing Devil's Advocate. Like, yeah, how I do you mean, feel I'm, about? I'm, I'm probably game value. with you in that. You know, mm-hmm. If I play all three of those, I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get another you know, plenty of enjoyment, plenty of nostalgia for sure, and plenty of time out of out of the purchase. Like I don't I don't think I would feel right. Yeah, you're right with with the what the prices they're selling it for on the virtual store. It's a little wonky to ask for sixty bucks, but I also feel like I don't mind paying twenty dollars for each of these games. Um outside of any other known pricing and, 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 and then not feeling like, yeah, and feeling like I, I, I got a pretty good deal out of it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard, like, I hate it. I hate to devalue classics and I do think Nintendo takes it a bit too far. I think the switch eShop in general has created a very unhealthy, um, environment for, you know, the customer as far well, as how expensive their games are. Going even before that too, the, the, the way Nintendo has handled the virtual store, it's like I, I bought titles mm-hmm. on my Wii. Oh, for sure. That I have no access to because there wasn't there wasn't accounts that allowed. Yeah, you know, it's not not like those purchases that I bought back on my Wii. I can now download on the Switch because there was no tracking by Nintendo. Yeah, I have uh, my Switch. My Wii's dead. I yeah, can't play. I can't play Ocarina of Time easily if I want to. I'd have to go find a th- 3DS copy or download that digitally. Which guess what? That you, still costs thirty five dollars on the 3DS because they uh, don't. If you run down to my parents, my sixty four is still there. <laughs> get out of my that'd be so funny like silence for like five minutes and all of a sudden you hear in the background me but now i'm on your side because okay so (laughs) real quick we didn't get to this sean's parents and so growing up sean and i lived very close to each other and then i moved into my no neighborhood even closer to sean's parents so right now sean and i are like a two minute walk from each other, but because of COVID and it's also very late at night, we are not recording in person right now, which would have been yeah. really fun. And I really wish we could have, but we can't. And so irony of ironies, another, we are, we are having this podcast talking another, to each other. Another over the bit internet. of my year ruined by COVID as well as I'm exactly. sure everyone else's. And, and Sean, of course, doesn't live in this area. He's only visiting for this one day and I haven't seen him in like in person in a while. So. Like two, I mean, I've been anyway. living in Alaska for two years. Exactly. I haven't seen you since your wedding. That's exactly when the last time I saw you. (laughs) Ah, 
Um, All right. So again, I will be buying this. I do think in many respects, it's a $60 value. Yeah. I just I wanted more. I wanted more in my $60. And I think that as a, sh- as a show of goodwill, not that Nintendo is like a bad company, but it's like when you, <laughs> it's the same thing you talk about with billionaires and why don't they do more with their money? You know, like this is just entertainment. So it's kind of silly to make these arguments and these comparisons, but like you could have. So why didn't you? Why didn't you go all out? And then why is it only available until March 31st? <laughs> so here's the third point that everybody's confused and pissed about. Physical and digital copies of this game, this compilation, 3D All-Stars, will only be available until March 31st of next year. Unprecedented. Have you ever heard of such a thing, Sean? I mean, it reminds me of the Disney Vault back when Disney did that. Yep. Remember, but buy Cinderella Disney, now or before it goes into the vault again. It isn't seen until, I don't know, like two years later when Disney needs to make money again. Yep. And we bought into that hook, line, and sinker. Even before we had the kid, we were like, anytime something came out of the vault, we went and sh- we bought our, our Blu-ray diamond pack, which came with the Blu-ray, the DVD, and a digital code. So we were covered. And then Disney Plus came out this year, and now the vault just doesn't exist anymore. At least for now. Who knows what they'll try in the future. But yeah, it sounds like the vault, but like it's ludicrous to think that a video game company of all people would do something like that. I, I, I feel it's like what ludicrous. it is, is is Nintendo's like, all right, so we're gonna put we're gonna send this back away. So when mm-hmm. the fortieth anniversary comes along, we'll just roll it back out and bada bing, bada boom, we don't have to do any extra effort. Yeah, maybe. I think I or, think that's or, possible. Or they'll tack and... on Galaxy Two and be the heroes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll get us. So where is Galaxy Two? Nobody knows. And I can't for the life of me think of why they wouldn't have included that except to sell it at a much higher price by itself later down the line. Um but the the prevailing theory as to why they're limiting it is because this is the goodwill gesture. Letting you buy all three in one fun package for sixty dollars is the goodwill gesture, and that after this they will split them up and probably charge anywhere between twenty and thirty dollars a piece. Or maybe like ten twenty or ten twenty forty or ten thirty forty. So like Super Mario sixty four will be ten dollars, Sunshine will be thirty, and then Galaxy will be forty. Because um, who did that similarly? Um, the Bioshock collection on Switch oh, was really? released for a full sixty dollars, but you can also buy them all piecemeal, uh, which is dumb because the Bioshock collection on PS4 is like twenty bucks. So yeah. it's like what? Yeah, it, here, I think here I goes that. When it came out on on Xbox One, and I thought about getting it because Katie Katie likes the thought of those games. Katie Katie right. my wife. Uh, for mm-hmm. our listeners, but she's terrified to play those games, and I was like, <laughs> "Whereas I, I've beaten the first one and, and Infinity on my uh, back on the 360, and I was like, I could get this, and then she could watch me yeah. play them. They were fun. And I wouldn't mind yeah. playing them again." Yeah. As an aside, I can't. I those are like pretty high on my backlog. Like when I'm just kind of be when I'm searching for something to play that isn't like a really quick indie game or something. Like I'm always like, hmm, maybe today's the day I play Bioshock because I've never played any of them. I watched Robert play most of the first one in our dorm when it came out but that was my only experience with I think it. that's how I, I watched pretty much every Metal Gear Solid since Metal Gear Solid uh, well the original Metal Gear Solid is Robert beating mm-hmm. it and me sitting there watching oh, I love those games we'll talk about that some I love, other time I love, I, love, I love watching someone beat those games it's uh, it's uh, those are there, some games just watch better than others like not just like twitch streaming or or watching like let's plays but like with a person in the room with you and metal gear solid is one of them because it's got just that perfect combo of really long cinematic cutscenes that are zany and off the wall that you guys can like talk about at the same time and then it's got all those kind of like you know puzzly esque stealth moments that you can really use a second pair of eyes for yeah Yeah, that's true anyway we're talking about mario but we're mostly done talking about Mario. Do you have any thoughts left before we move on to our last news segment? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw out a quick Mario fact that most people probably know. But on this mm-hmm. podcast, we like to talk about, or at least Jason, and he's not here, so I'm going to do it for him, like to talk, so, talk about Skyrim. And so <laughs> Mario 64 was really the first time Mario, I think, was voiced in a video game. And he's uh, voiced probably. by a guy, but he... he, he Luigi, Waluigi, and Wario are all voiced by, I think, a guy, I think it's Charles... Martinet. Martinet or Martinet, maybe, if yeah. it's French. But yeah, that's and, the right and one. And that gentleman ha- has voiced Mario since 64. He's also the voice of the dragon Parthenax in Skyrim, which I found awesome. And now every time I talk to him, I'm like, sure, Mario, I'll, I'll go kill Alvin sure. for you. No problem. <laughs> I imagine he doesn't use his Mario voice, though. He does not. He's, he's, a, he's a very impressive sounding dragon. 
Uh, Probably uses I, his warrior voice. <laughs> <laughs> Come get me, Skyrim. <laughs> Show me your thumb. I love Wario. I love playing as Wario in Super Mario Party. It's fun. All right. So, but it's cool. It's coming out on the 18th, which is next, no, two weeks from now. So, two weeks from Friday. So, we'll have this very shortly. I'm getting it. I won't pre order it till the last second so I can have it downloaded and ready to go. But I don't want to give them the satisfaction of like, oh, I was so ravenous for this. I put money down on it. <laughs> you know two weeks prior it's the very least like literally the very least i can do so um feel free to moosh off me and play it with uh, off my account if you want get your own if you don't have good internet or whatever but uh yeah they I also mean, talked about that's, a bunch that's of my big surprise news for this podcast is i will be in a house on tuesday and i will hopefully have internet oh, by that weekend excellent. so we can play tnd i that's might have so no furniture good. but i will be able, i will should have internet you just need a floor to roll the dice on yeah exactly all right so the direct had a lot of other like small stuff in between like there's gonna be a lot of cross promotional stuff where mario's gonna be in um like there's gonna be mario events in smash brothers there's going to be mario furniture and animal crossing there's mario merchandise all over the place you can go to my nintendo and uh do tasks to earn points to get these really cool looking pins um in like the older like early 90s uh mario um like art style like whenever they would do like cartoonish like uh comic stuff so that's fun so you know like just go to nintendo's website and check their twitter and all that i'm sure they're just going to be announcing stuff left and right over the next like couple weeks especially but you know since some of this stuff doesn't go away until march 31st i imagine you know who knows there might be a surprise here or there nothing major i i would assume but it's coming. I mean, we, yeah, it's so happy of, birthday we, mario you know, same way we had our year of luigi maybe we'll get a year of the 35th anniversary of mario yeah, probably. Oh, and, and one last thing before I move on is this bodes well for Zelda's 35th, which is next year. Yes. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed we get a really good because I would, I would, like, they wanna... I would like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword while you're listening, Nintendo. Very pleased yes, and thank you. That is the 3D classic. Do not give me Ocarina of Time. Do not give me Ocarina of Time for the, like, 17th time. I yeah. do not want it on my Switch unless it's coming in, like, unless they announce it as, like, and now 64 games can be played with your Nintendo Switch online subscription. I don't want that game again. Do not offer it to me. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, there's, like, there's no, there's so many easy ways to play it. There's so many easy ways to play it. Wind Waker, that is not true. Uh, Twilight Princess, that is not true. And it is especially especially not true for skyward sword yep which is stranded on the wii or you know a dolphin emulator if you're especially fans but even that's tricky because you gotta have, um you gotta have the wiimote hooked up and that's not an easy thing to do uh because it is we motion or uh, the motion controls are very important to it all right that was it last little bit real small just wanted to shout them out cd project red will be offering a ps5 xbox series x version of the witcher 3 for purchase and there will be free no cost upgrades for people who have already purchased it on the ps4 and xbox one x so screw you activision screw you 2k screw you uh 505 games the uh, people who publish control and aren't giving similar things out this is how you do it offer it for people who want to buy it they can buy you know the the fancy new game now i don't know why they wouldn't buy the old one and get the free upgrade there might be some kind of like oh you have to have already had it or it's only available for a limited time or this one comes with all the dlc i i don't know but i'm sure they'll incentivize people to buy the newer one just drop more money on it but you know cd project red always consumer friendly at least so far and um so it's just a cool move that they're gonna go ahead and offer that for people who already have it good job cd project red you continue to oh, not be God. bioware and i'm proud of you for it <laughs> all right so you continue to be like all right that was the news now we'll move on to what we wish we were playing because we here at never free to play don't have a lot of time between shenanigans and work and children and traveling to california then back to florida and thanks then back lot, to La a different thanks a lot coast guard <laughs> we don't have a lot of time sometimes so we wish we were playing a lot so sean why don't you start us out what do you wish you were playing well, I apparently wish I was playing Mario Odyssey so I could go see, you know, uh, Princess Peach's castle and modern Nintendo graphics. It's great. You should do it. I really, it, it, it could, every time I'm like, oh man, I'm bored. I should play a game. What should I play? And I'm always like, I should play Mario Odyssey. And then I'm like, oh, look, Skyrim. Um, <laughs> Sky, Skyrim is definitely my video game comfort food. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I wish I was playing Doom, uh, but as we'll see, uh, I've been distracted by another game. Um, I actually did a decent amount reading like reviews uh, that came out for for the the, the new Avengers game, and I mm-hmm. am definitely not interested in playing the online mode. Um, I got my fill there playing Destiny and Division uh, for a while, the first ones, and I, I, I quickly burnt myself out on those games as service models and basically sure. turning my video gaming into a daily set of tasks and jobs I had to get done. I really didn't need my hobby to actually be a second job. No thanks. Uh, but from what I can tell, the the story campaign is surprisingly good. And like like I'm hearing some people saying it's like 10, 12 hours long. Um, and that's mm, yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, if, if if it's if it is indeed a you know a pretty good and entertained story, 10, 12 hours is enough that I you know I wouldn't mind. Maybe not sixty dollars, but maybe after it's been out for a while. Excuse me. And it uh yeah it drops into like 40, 45, 40. I wouldn't mind picking that up or or just yeah you know, I'm sure I could you know beat that over weekend so you know red box it or something and rent it over weekend I, I wouldn't mind playing that um and then the last thing is I know it's been a while but we all played Astroneer that one time and I still it was so much fun want to do that because I still want to launch Robert into space and presumably then have to launch a rescue mission to save Robert from space uh so the sooner I can get my consoles back and we can start having our, our off D D week be uh, gaming week would be uh, fantastic. Can't wait, and I will volunteer to save Robert from space. <laughs> Good, because I am. I'm definitely Houston. I am. Uh, well, that's yes. Not true. We need someone competent I, I, on I, the on the ground. Uh, on on a note from last week, sadly, uh, I was informed by NASA that they have delayed selection for the astronaut candidates into next year due to COVID. So we won't know if I'm an astronaut mm. for another another year now. It's fine. It gives us more time to go ahead and get the campaign going to get you <laughs> launched into space for realsies. Uh, so that's um, what I wish I was playing. How about you, Karch? Um, just on your Avengers note, I did listen to a uh, about a you know a little over an hour long podcast on some impressions. A couple of people who had beaten it. A couple of people who were you know about halfway or three quarters of the way through. It was the kind of funny uh, games cast on okay. the Avengers. And um, I mean, I was kind of on the fence like the last time they did the beta. Um, definitely was not going to want to play the multiplayer beyond maybe like one or two sessions with Jason or whoever else was playing. I'm yeah. still kind of like, eh. some people do love the story and some people are like, oh, it's just cheesy fun. I'm like, okay, well, which one is it? Is it really good or is it not? <laughs> like, I don't, I think people are just having a hard time explaining them, like describing it to themselves the way they feel like, I don't know. And it's hard, it's hard to not describe it in MCU terms, I guess is probably the best way to put it. How do you describe this brand new thing without just constantly hearkening back to these movies that everybody watched? Yeah, and that's but, th- that. That was probably the the most uh, generous part I read in one of the reviews. Was either mm-hmm. Kotaku's or Polygon's was yeah they made the choice of having Miss Marvel be kind of the the lead character with the majority of the character arc, and I have no doubt mm-hmm. that was deliberate because. She hasn't been in the MCU, so here's a new character that we get to yeah. experience. Well, really, you know, the, the the big name MCU characters that we've we've gotten used to are are really more background and side characters, and their 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 story is less important to her. So, I, I, yeah, I thought that was if that is indeed what they did, and they did it well, it was probably smart given the situation they're in with the movies. Yeah, that is what I hear. She's the, one of the strongest parts. Interesting though that they didn't. Um they didn't really market that prior to like the beta and and the release of the game. Like I didn't know she was in, or or maybe I knew she was in it, but I had no idea she was going to be like such a huge focus of it. Oh yeah. Well, from the, you know, the, the, the original bit, we saw the whole opening helicarrier scene. You see all the Coraline Avengers and then, you know, yeah. And then, you know, I guess things totally change and you, you spend the rest of the game following Miss Marvel around, but yeah, it wasn't like they, they were upfront about really what the story was going to be about guess we'll have to find out once we wait for it to go on sale because yeah i'll probably be the same boat as you about wait wait about you know because it probably won't be long not that the game will be bad or poorly received but i feel like the more popular and bigger a triple a game is the faster it goes on sale especially around christmas time it's like all right we're gonna chop off twenty dollars here you go um and definitely by the time the first dlc comes out like the first major pack i guarantee they'll drop it down at least for that time being to like entice people to get like if you weren't here now or if you weren't here then, really want to come in now, that kind of stuff, because, you know, Hawkeye. So, Hawkeye. all right. Um, Clearly the thing that will draw everyone into the game. Ever, I love Hawkeye. He's great. I mean, he's he's got probably some of the best quips. <laughs> 
So I wish I was playing Spirit Fair. I really thought I was going to get back to it, but I just been busy and I didn't I didn't want to be on my PC when I wasn't being busy. But I talked about it a little last week. Uh, apparently it's a little buggy though, so you know maybe I will hold off uh, because really what the decision between this is less a wish I was playing and should I buy this for the Switch because I really enjoyed the like the forty ish minutes I played on Game Pass, but this is a Switch game through and through and I don't really want to play it on my PC. But again, it was a little bit buggy. But there was already also a patch, so those things might just be gone altogether. So I'll check out. I'll just kind of keep looking back, you know, checking on Spirit Fair, see how it's handling and and what people are saying about it as far as its stability, because you know, that's what it seems to be like. A couple of things where it just crashes a little too often and other weird like you know bugs that pretty much force you to restart it. And no, that's not it something you want when you're playing a relaxing game. No, not at all. As, as we'll find uh, yeah, out so later. Just, exactly. Um, so I definitely here's something I wish I wasn't playing because this had been on my list before, and it's not anymore. And that's Crystal Chronicles, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, because yeah. by all accounts, this is also a buggy mess, and it's just like, especially on the multiplayer side, which is, is the strongest appeal to want to play this game. Like eh, the the single player might be fun enough to play through, but like I was I was really excited to play this with you, maybe Jason too. And, you know, relive some of that childhood nostalgia. Um, I downloaded the demo, like, last week, and I have since deleted it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pass on it. I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mentioned last week that I was pretty bummed out on it when I found out it wasn't gonna have couch co-op. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, hey, I've, I've since seen that it's, it's buggy. Apparently, it, it doesn't even play as well as it did on the GameCube, where, like, the smallest little, like, this, you know, you stepped on the button and the door is opening cutscene takes, like, 10 seconds to load the, the two second scene of the door opening and then another 10 seconds to get back to the game. Yeah. So I'm just, uh. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not dealing with it when I'm already bummed out about the game. So I, 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 yeah. I will not be touching it and I will, I will probably sadly find buried somewhere. Once I get all my stuff, my old crystal Chronicles <laughs> uh, game, game guide and, and, and probably finally trash it. <gasps> no! I'm, I'm that broken up about it. Like I, I feel so Aww. betrayed by this game not being what I wanted it to be. I'm so sorry. Um, we'll just have that fun little tune in our head forever. Maybe I'll download the soundtrack and that'll be enough. Well, then that the the yeah that game God all, all, that entire game like the, the the little the title screen the, the actual sung song and mm-hmm. and all the music you know especially the traveling and then the the end of the year you know music yes and then the, just the, the little like storybook narratives at the start of every level mm-hmm. like there, there's so many little great things about that game that i'd love to, yeah I'd, I'd like to see either you know the remade or carry forward in a game it just it just makes me yep. sad that it didn't work out yeah they don't always but hey we saved ourselves 40 bucks so yeah all right last thing i wish i was playing i learned of a game called neximon extinction and it is a pokemon clone through and through but um instead of trying to copy like maybe the newest version of Pokemon like Sword and Shield or trying to copy the oldest version of Pokemon like Red and Blue, it's trying to copy somewhere in the middle, somewhere in like the late GBA, early DS uh, style. So okay. it's like it's like a top downish, you know, uh sprite esque looking um art style. Instead of like those really lazy three D models that you get with most modern Pokemon uh, the the little creature. I don't know what they call them. I guess maybe Nexamons. Uh, the monsters that the you know that the I, that you I, capture. I hope everything that was Poke, you know, is now just Nexus. It's like Nexa balls, <laughs> Nexamon, Nexa centers. Oh. They, I think it is because I think they call them like Nexa Nexa traps or something like that instead of Poke balls. But it, it looks really good. It looks a little. It it's definitely got a strong anime vibe, but not in like that gross way that I can't stand that really generic anime way. Like it looks like it still has a unique style to itself even if it is anime inspired uh supposedly it has a story that's worth you know at least the 20 bucks and you know playing through like the difficulties like actually there for a change um uh, instead of being the baby mode that pokemon has been stuck in for the last few years um maybe even a little too hard supposedly but i think there was just a patch like two days ago that said hey we're gonna let you kind of you know set the difficulty where you want uh prior to that it was dynamic so part of the problem Pokemon has is if you over level too soon, the whole game can kind of become a steamroll fest. Yeah. Whereas in this one, the, the Nexamons, the monsters, they, they level with you and the, the, the trainers level with you. They've got side quests. You can tackle 
their versions of the gyms in any order, or at least in multiple different orders, instead of just kind of it being a straight line through the game. Um, it, it just looks good. It's only 20 bucks. Yeah. So for the reviews it's getting and for $20 and for, you know, like, like <laughs> I've talked about it a few times and Jason's not supposed to, he's supposed to not let me play Pokemon. And I haven't been, I don't want to play Pokemon, but it would be nice. To, and I've been saying this for years. Like, where is the true Pokemon contender? Why are people letting Game Freak and Nintendo just like, have this like who's trying to like take it from them yeah it's, and unfortunately it's, it's, it's not like own... this is a particularly you un- i mean like it's it, it's not something to be overly difficult to create your own version of right a good version too like you could and and and, and then also not be a copy because like this is just a copy uh temtem is that like kind of like pseudo mmo one that's on yeah. like early access right now and it'll be launching on consoles like next year but like it's pretty much just a copy and you know i that's good because a lot like all i want is them to copy pokemon sometimes but strip out all the nonsense that they've added in the last 10 years because the gba and early ds ones are my favorite versions of pokemon and that's what this seems to be trying to emulate so we'll see like i I will definitely get this within probably before the end of the year but not within the next couple weeks because i'll be playing mario um but yeah those are what i wish very recently i think at least on console next simon extinction came out i I remember seeing like when tim tim came out i I was tracking on that this this one i I haven't even heard of Mm. it's like i said it it's definitely low budget in some ways and it's so weird because people will trash Pokemon for the long, like, you know, till the cows come home. And then yeah. when they see a contender, they'll be like, but it doesn't do all these things at Pokemon. Just like, okay, well, do you actually dislike it or not? <laughs> uh, 28th. So, yeah, it came out last week. Oh, okay. 28 or two weeks ago, whatever. Very recently. So, yeah, this is a very recent thing. Um, I think I found it because of some, like, in, I think the publisher. Yeah, the publisher, P-Cube. I'm, uh, I follow them on Twitter. Um, and they have some pretty decent number or pretty interesting looking games. And I, I typically like at least the look of them, you know, like the gif of it. I'm like, that usually catches my interest. And then similarly, this one caught my interest. And so I checked it out. Yeah. Um, the designs and last thing, the, the, the other thing that like these games hinge on and was something that I feel like Tem Tem falls short on is the monster design. And that's the thing that Pokemon has never lost, in my opinion, personally, is the monster design. The character design is superb and these are pretty good too the next amounts maybe not pokemon good and but nothing's ever going to be as good as the original 151 but it's i i i that's and encourage you to hear that they've actually got pretty good design i i, I agree it's gonna be hard to beat the original pokemon especially combined with nostalgia but uh i mean is this i i assume this is made by like a like an indie developer oh yeah definitely so man yeah, probably a pretty impressive feat in and of itself yeah it's got pretty low reviews but like like i said sometimes people can just get their experiences colored but it's only 20 dollars, and it doesn't do these things i wanted it to so it's five out of ten and i think okay well maybe it is maybe it is a five out of ten but i have a feeling it's probably a little bit better than that yeah just just my gut anyway that's what i wish i was playing but we have actually been playing some video games so sean tell us about something we've both been playing something that i didn't care for very much but also didn't play very much so i'll let you take the lead and and really guide us through windbound yeah so i picked up windbound uh when it released last friday uh um and i so i i like it um i think i think the art of the game is is very pretty um i find i find the 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 crafting mechanics uh enjoyable especially i i I got i'm to the point in the game now where i've got like a catamaran and uh uh, you know, and and and, it's, and and a big sail and all that, so I'm, I'm able to kind of get around and, and have a pretty pretty reliable boat. The survival part, um, I I don't find it all that uh, onerous. Um, mm-hmm. I'm 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 sitting there and I'm yeah you know, I'm I, I I've got food yeah and I, I've got it, and I, sometimes it gets close to going bad and I got to eat it sooner, but I'm never sitting there like oh I am I am nearly starved and I'm going to start losing health and I haven't found food like I, I have not had that issue where. I don't know if, if other people are just like wandering aimlessly throughout the ocean, but I've, I've never been far enough away from, you know, incapable of finding an island so fast uh, that I haven't been able to restock up on food you know, before my stamina bar gets below, uh, below half. Um, yeah, I haven't 
had that problem either starving specifically food i some of my food goes bad like i got lucky and killed this pretty big thing okay. um because it glitched it glitched on me and i just stabbed it to death <laughs> while it sat there so i had a bunch of meat in my pockets and i didn't bother cooking it because cooking took forever and it, it started does. spoiling and then i ate it all and i got all like poisoned for four seconds <laughs> but other than that i didn't think there was any downside so i just kept eating raw meat yeah, I think I think you just get the little days, but it still fills mm-hmm. up your. I, I don't think it give, maybe it doesn't give you any health back, but it, it fills back up I your. I think that's your stamina. Yeah, a little I think bit. that's right. Um, yeah, but you know, kind of to your point too, the the combat for the game, the yeah, you really you either have your your spear, or then you have your two range weapons. You have your sling, and then you you, you have a bow and arrow that you eventually you'll find things that'll give you silk that you can make bow strings, and therefore you can start using the bow. And I don't think mm. you're to the, you haven't ha- found a bow yet, have you? I found arrows, and I have, I have the recipe to craft the arrows. I'm like, I guess I can make a bow eventually. Yeah. So you, the, the the sling is 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 not great, it, and it takes some getting used to because the rocks have some pretty hefty drop. And then, but the spear combat, the the, the melee combat is definitely where combat in this game kind of falls apart. Like she, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, she, she sits there and she like she like rears up. And then she stabs, and then she like sits there in the stab position for a moment. So it's it's not you know, yeah, it's got like the Z targeting of like you know of a Zelda game, you know, where you're locking on the guys, but like there's no fluidity in, in combat. It, I mean, it, which I guess makes sense. You know, she's supposed to be a sailor, not not a warrior. So it, it is basically I'm gonna dodge, I'm gonna stab, I'm gonna reset, let the enemy like try to attack again, dodge, stab, and so it, it, melee combat's pretty pretty meh, and then. You know, to the point of glitches, like I have found that if I'm a decent amount away from the enemy using a ranged weapon, they'll just stand there and take my arrows and die, and they won't, they won't, they yeah. won't move. They won't act like they're getting shot. So it's pretty easy to like find a creature and be like, all right, well, I'm just going to stand on top of this tree trunk, uh, you know, hundred, you know, fifty feet away from you, and just shoot you with enough arrows to kill you, and then I'm going to come, st- you know, come, come loot your body, your corpse. Um, I and then beyond that, I've I've run into some pretty frustrating glitches so i was doing mm. so yeah you each um yeah you, you each each chapter you got to find the three islands with the towers you have to activate and then you go to the main area and then you have a trial and the trial is a sailing challenge and at the end of the second trial i beat it and i, and I went to go into the portal at the end and my game crashed and this is when i realized that this game does not have an auto save Except it saves it at the at the start of every chapter, which meant I went all the yeah. way back to the start of chapter two. Uh, yeah. And so it's just like, well, dang it. I, I just, you know, in a melee, that was only an hour and a half, two hour of time because it, it's not a super long game. But it was like, you know, this 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 is a pretty, pretty game impacting bug combined with the fact that you, you, you didn't. Yeah, I, I would have thought at least you would have put, hey, every time you jump in your boat, it'll auto save. Yeah, you because know, that's that's kind of a, a good transition point. It'd be a, you know, a, a good way to do that. Oh, you're back. You're you're back in the boat. You're clearly leaving an island. We'll we'll, we'll save now. Because it's not yeah. like the game limits you on saving. You can stop and save at any time. And and really, that's what mm-hmm. I start doing. I save every time I get back in my boat and I'm getting ready to leave an island. Um, and then I had I was literally just like you know trying to find the the last tower in like chapter three, I think. And I, you know, I, I went to go bring up my map, and my map was like blank. And I was like, "Well, that's weird." And I was like, "All right, I guess I'll do this, you know, without the map." And I, I had a general idea of the direction I wanted to go and to go find, to go find the uh, the last island. But like, my map had just gone like the screen just was like was white, and then the game crashed. And like I said, that I'd learned my lesson about saving at islands, but it was really at this point that I'd learned my lesson, my lesson about saving at my lesson <laughs> island, because then I went back to the beginning of chapter three. So now I've, re- you know, I've repeated all of chapter two and two thirds of chapter three, and I'm pretty sure chapter three is when I got the bow and arrow, and I was like, and I and I, and I had fought some like tough creatures, and I had like armor that would like made me stealthy and all that, and I was like, oh, I gotta redo all of that again. Um, but even even with that, yeah, you know, with I, I I enjoy the sailing. Yeah, you know, the, there's not there's not much of a story. There's there's this this kind of you know revealed story of you know the the big sea creature that you know that you know breaks your boat and strands you in the beginning. That there's yeah you know, some some slowly reveal of like oh the, the the people of the seas used to worship this and then they started like eating them these creatures instead yeah. and they went to war. And I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to tie into like my character's current existence, but it's it's enough of an interest. I'm like, yeah, I want to I want to see the rest of this. Um, yeah. 
So I'm I'm gonna beat it because I'm I'm in chapter four. I have found two of the tower, two of the three towers in chapter four, and I'm at the point where like I've got metal stuff and my boats. Yeah, you know, but you know, I I I could probably upgrade my boat to a small warship at this point. So right. yeah, it's short enough. I'm having enough fun that even with its flaws, I yeah I'm 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 gonna see it through. I'm gonna beat it. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I, yeah, but it is, it is, it definitely needed a little more time. I think combat could have used a little bit more streamlining and then certainly they could have spent more time, uh, resolving some, some of these glitches. Cause I've, I've also have enemies. You, you talked about enemies that just like glitched out and you were able to kill. I had an enemy where like I shot them and it was the first time I'd encountered this enemy. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited mm-hmm. for your loot. You're going to unlock me new recipes. I'm going to build something new and cool for my boat. And I like shot the enemy with the last arrow and it flew like 200 feet up in the air and then <laughs> landed in the ocean and was gone. And I was like, oh, wow. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> guess I'll, I guess I'll go find the, the next island now. So, yeah. It's, if you hold down, next time that happens, just hold down the capture button and <laughs> it'll capture like the last 30 seconds, 30 or 60 seconds. And then you can tweet it out, and, I, and then I'll grab it and I'll throw it up on our Twitter. Yeah, because that sounds hilarious. Yeah, it, it, yeah. If, if, if you could have seen my reaction, because like, and, I, and I'm sure <laughs> you basically watched me see it fall, and then look back to where it was, and you could tell there's just this like, <sighs> but I, I, you know, I, 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 I like I, I shot the thing with like the only three metal arrows at the time because I just found metal and I was like smelting more of it, and I was like, that was those those were my best weapons. That I was hoping to get yeah. back from you when I harvested your corpse. Nope. Nope. So, nope. Um, but yeah, I, I paid. It was it was thirty dollars. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I think I'll, I'll give it enough that glitches aside, and hopefully a patch comes out to at least resolve the the, the ones where the game crashes and just boot you. Um, I'm o- I'm okay having spent thirty bucks on it. I I, I it, it's been enjoyable enough. It's it's pretty. It yeah, you know, like I said, it it still checks the box on the survival nautical stuff that I enjoy that, that I I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I played it. Yeah. I will say one good thing. The music is very pretty, especially when you start sailing on the, you know, the ocean for any length of time that kicks in with this, you know, very energetic piano. Yeah. Piece. That's very nice. But yeah, I, I played very little bit of it, little of this game. I beat chapter one and got a bit into chapter two and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I just like, I just saw like three things I liked and then immediately just started ignoring anything else and put the blinders on. I don't know if they kind of like dress this game up in their little previews that made it look a lot better because as I'm jumping and climbing stuff, like everything just feels worse than what I saw. So I don't know if this game's on other consoles and maybe I was looking at a PC like playthrough or a PS4 yeah, it, playthrough. It, it, but like, it released on, I'm pretty sure, everything. Yeah, I'm. I, I wonder how much of my experience is because oh, it's a little worse on the Switch versus other things. But I can't imagine it's much worse on the Switch. These some of these things are just like no, this is just the way the game works. Um, like it just doesn't do any one thing well to me. Like well enough at least. Like like I I haven't unlocked an actual sail boat yeah. thing yet. It just I don't have the recipes because it's incredibly unclear. Like, I mean, it's clear that I get, I pick certain things up and I suddenly get a recipe. I just haven't found a thing that gets me all the pieces I need for a boat. That'll like let the wind actually, you know, like an actual sailboat of some kind. And so say, you, that you leaves me sticks and grass, right? Yeah. You should be able to build a grass sail by this point. The police put on your grass canoe. Can you put the sail on the canoe? You can. Okay. That part was unclear. I didn't try that. It, so yeah, I'll try that. That is mainly so like you're eventually going to want to build your little catamaran. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, so could, could you build like the hull pieces? But like yeah. I go to place I have them a hole. Yeah. and it, it wouldn't let me place the hull pieces. And then yeah. what I realized is, is I had to place like the bamboo platform and then I could place the hull pieces on that. Like it's, it's, it, it is not a game that does anything to really teach you what you're doing. So it was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just save right now and I'm going to experiment and yeah. uh, hopefully not make too, you know, too many mistakes. Low times, though, prevent me from wanting to Ooh, do that. Yeah, you're right about that. They're bad, bad low times. And so, like, all these little, they're like, I don't want to call them cuts because I think they're a little bit bigger than cuts, but there's still too many of those as well. And it just, for me, it's like, it's, mm, 
I'm really glad I was able to demo this basically because I would I personally would not have wanted to spend You're $30 welcome. on this. Yes, thank you so much, Sean. It's just a big bummer because I wanted to like this um, and it's like, a lot. But it, I think for me, it's it's like there's a kernel of a game in there that I really want to play. Absolutely. But it's yeah. just this game is like it's it's enough of of like what I want to play that I enjoy. It, but you're right, it, it it is not fully scratching the uh, the itch. Like I want mm-hmm. I want a polished, bigger, deeper, more complex version of this. Right, like not like it's not missing anything per se, but just do it better. <laughs> do yeah. the sailing better. Do the crafting better. Do the everything better. Um, and maybe an extra year. That sounds like a long time. But maybe an extra year would have helped that because, like I said, even something is sim- like you, you have to go up a tower on these little steps to get to this thing at the top of that tower three different times per chapter. Yep. It's a miserable experience. It's a miserable experience to do this very basic act of climbing and jumping on these rocks. Like the second tower in chapter two, I missed my jump five different times. Was I am it, not. Was, was there a big tree in your way going up that one? I don't remember. I don't think because like so. the game's apparently somewhat procedurally generated, but I get the impression that like it mm-hmm. just randomly places the three islands each time, and it's not like Probably. each island is unique. And there was one yeah. where like I had a big tree that was blocking my view, and so because it ruined like the field of depth of my view, I couldn't tell that I needed to jump. And for whatever reason, mm-hmm. like you would think after falling the first time, I would realize, oh, I was supposed to jump there. I fell like three more times before I was like, all right, Sean, being stupid here, you need to jump, like. Like, I was on autopilot, and it was not working, so... Yeah, and, like, she just, she, like, she'll teleport, like, you think, and sometimes a good way, like, you'll you'll jump, and you're like, oh, there's no way I made that, and all of a sudden, she'll just kind of, like, skip a couple feet up, and she'll just grab the ledge, and and pull herself up. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) which is good, and then other times, you're like, oh, I totally, nope, I didn't make that jump, I just fell, and it's very punishing for falling damage. Like, you're not allowed to fall even a little bit. No. It's just kind of dumb. Like, I've I've not had that problem. If I jump off the I've had it be in my favor, I haven't been uh, to my my detriment yet. Gotcha. I probably will now, So, you do eventually get a a Legend or a Breath of the Wild style paraglider, although you fall much faster than you do in Breath of the Wild. Um, Mm. But that is nice because eventually you can activate those things and instead trying to like walk back down the pillars and be like, oh, nope, I pushed forward too long and now I fall and then lost half my health. You're like, nope, jump. And then just paraglide back to the beach and get back to your boat. Do you ever have a use besides those towers, though, to jump off and use that? Uh, a, cu- a couple of the islands I've been to have had like elevations and cliffs, and so it's uh-huh. been convenient to use that. To, but there, it hasn't been like, oh, if I paraglide off of here, I'll be able to like get to this unaccessible area where there's I don't know the, the jars that have the sea shards that let you, excuse me, buy the boons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, so I I, I I will disagree with you because I, I think I agree with you on most of it. I do like the sailing. Um, it's like. It's, I'm sure I would if I could get to it. I'll true. try it okay. out again yeah. just to see. Like, it's it's enough because like you know, depending upon the direction of the wind, you can you can like you can let your sail loose and it'll go with you in the direction of the wind, or you can keep it tight, and that's how you gotta keep it tight if you want to run like 90 degrees to the wind. Um mm-hmm. I've got like a big enough sail though that if I'm running 90 degrees to the wind, I have to like keep my sail down because it'll try to tip my whole my whole boat over. Um like it's 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 more complex than Wind Waker. But not as like mm-hmm. tedious as like setting the sails and all that, and 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 as slow as in like Sea of Thieves. So like it it strikes a good balance there. That that might be the one thing I will say this game does well is is this, is the sailing once you build get a sailboat and build a decent boat. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it. I'll jump in at some point and, and build the sail. Now that I know I can yeah. attach it to the canoe because because up until now you get a canoe and you're paddling. And you have to hold the button, yeah. and it's slow, and it's like it's not too slow, but it's slow enough that I that having to hold the button makes it like my my finger is getting tired. I don't want to hold this button from island to island because it's it's not a yeah, you, small distance. You, you definitely with sticks and grass should be able to build yourself a grass sail and and, and mm-hmm. start using the wind. Have you have you encountered a crab I, yet? No, I have not. Crabs are terrifying. That's see, so funny. That see, you know, like, like like the coral reefs that you pass sometimes that you can like yeah, bust your yeah. boat on. So sometimes crabs jump off those reefs and try to attack your what? boat. And I had That's just ridiculous. built my like my my catamaran, and immediately I had mm-hmm. built like two grass halls. So like my boat was weak as could be. Like I'm I'm at like solid wood halls and all that at this point. And like 
I like I thought I'd hit the coral. I was like, oh man, I thought I was pretty far from that coral. And then I realized like my like my that like one of my two hulls in my catamaran kept blinking red because it was getting damaged. And I was like, what? I looked over and there was like a crab on it. And he was like, ha ha, screw you. And like hit my hull one more time and broke the whole right side of my boat. And thankfully, so I funny. was like nearly to land, so I was able to like push my boat to the land, and I had to like rebuild my boat. And I was like, all right. Crabs are terrifying. Did you, I, I did you kill scarred. the crab? No, he, he just went into the water and I never saw him ah, again. The crab defeated me, Karch. <laughs> there was a crab uh, battle and just like Naked Snake, I lost. You lost big time. Hmm. All right, Windbound. What else have you been playing, Sean? Uh, I mean, spent most of the last week uh, still in hotels. So fitness boxing, still, uh, yeah. still, still trying to say, stay remotely healthy. And that's good. Yeah. Dude, just film yourself fitness boxing without a shirt on, pants optional, and that'll be our YouTube content. <laughs> I, if it makes you feel better, a lot of times when I come home and do this after work, I do just strip down to my boxers and fitness box. Yeah. So. I would in my own home. Yeah, that's right. All right. So, fitness boxing, stay fit, stay yeah. naked. Well, uh, uh, all right. right. You say so. what, what, what do you got, Charles? <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> So I listen to, I have a uh, podcast I listen to called the Top 100 Games Podcast, uh, hosted by Jared Petty, formerly of IGN and a bunch of other outlets, and he's currently doing something else, but he does this on the side for fun. Um, and he, I think it was the, they were on number 70, ooh, 75 or 74, and they brought Suikoden 2, uh, he pronounces it Suikoden, so I don't know. I don't know what the correct way. He lived in Japan for a while, so and can speak Japanese. So I, I, I'll go ahead and go with him. So Suikoden Two is a PS One JRPG that I never had heard of uh, until many years after it came out. I've heard of it since then. Like I've known about this game for a while, um, but it's very much beloved. Uh, came out on the PS One, if I didn't say that already. Uh, but it's done in, you know, a very SNES style. So it's got its pixel art, but much nicer because it is a PS1 game. So they yeah. do have more oomph to them. But the conceit basically, and I'm still very early on, is, you know, you're just voiceless guy, um, number 75, <laughs> in an army with a friend. And you guys oh, get I'm, betrayed I'm, I'm by... I'm worried about that friend. Yeah, well, he's not dead yet. Oh, who, right. who knows what happens to him, but he's not dead yet. Um, but he is, he's, he is, you know, he's basically your voice cause you don't say a lot. Although I will say that you get a lot more options than you traditionally do in these kinds of games to respond. And so I typically kind of hate the silent protagonist type. I find it is a lazy and weak choice to try and make me feel like I'm that person because that's not what I, I don't silently just nod along to my life. <laughs> so it's nice that I get to like, even if it's just like a pointless choice, that just kind of gives me at least the smallest like ah, I, uh, illusion of agency. Sorry, what? A bug oh, flew on my screen. <laughs> now you're you're gun shy from the crab attack. <laughs> um. So anyway, a typical JRPG starts off. You're in an army. You get betrayed, and then you're seen as a traitor slash enemy. You get picked up by these people, and I still don't really know what's going on aside from that. I'm I'm helping these rebels i guess like they they were my enemy and now i'm on their side because it turns out my country is run by an evil dictator kind of situation turns Um, out you were the nazis turns out we were the nazis all along are we the baddies (laughs) are we the baddies i love that (laughs) that's great um so some differences though between this game and most jrpgs you usually have a party of anywhere between three and four people and you might have like six to let's be generous and say 10 party members total throughout the whole game so we could in two boasts 108 party members potentially oh, and that's a lot of party members not at once six at once but 108 total to and i don't I don't from? know maybe they what the, like that just to choose from yeah exactly you, the whole like wow. the conceit of this game along with the, just going through the stories that you clearly you're supposed to recruit them because I've already done that a couple of times I was given a few and some are temporary and that I assume will probably come back later that I'll have a chance to recruit permanently but you know you're just walking around and you've got a bunch of generic NPCs and you'll see one that's not so generic and they'll have a like an actual face portrait when you talk to them and usually there's some kind of way to engage with them beyond just talking like you know you'll get to start basically start a side quest essentially yeah and then whatever you do leads to them joining your little rabble band and and it's it's really fun it's and otherwise everything else is pretty simple it's you know it's attack 
Um, have you ever played Chrono Trigger? Yes. Okay, so in Chrono Trigger, you had uh, your your abilities, and then depending on who was in your party, if they had an ability as well, you could use like a team ability. Yep. Uh, this game has a bunch of those, but because there's 108 people, it's kind of like a fun mix and match. See who has what kind of abilities that they can use with their teammates. Um, and they do all kinds of things like, okay, it'll do a regular attack, but it attacks everybody or it attacks just this column of enemies or all those kinds of things, or it applies a status effect. So that's a unique trait and, you know, benefits from having the six people in your party. The other thing is that, um, the magic system is very similar to the original Final Fantasy or uh, D and D in that you don't have MP per se, like it's not just a point pool, um, but you have like uses of so levels. You, you got, so you, you have, have limited cast, exactly. And it's it's huh. interesting because it, they're usually it makes the spells a lot more worth it. Um, I find that Final Fantasies and similar style JRPGs often struggle to walk the balance for magic because it can be too strong or too weak. And oftentimes it's too weak. Like you might get three good casts, but then like there's nothing to it because they cost, you know, like one third of your magic points each time. Um, And then that character can't do anything else. Not so with this one, like the spells are worth using, but they're also worth saving for like a boss fight. And then most characters, usually the magic oriented ones are a little bit weaker, but they're not completely useless when they're not casting magic. Because again, it's such a, um, coveted resource so far maybe that becomes less true as i go on i'm only a few hours in so but i'm enjoying it um i definitely will just kind of keep that on the back burner yeah i mean this seems like a game if if not you know just uh must have fantastic replay value certainly just be like huh i'm just gonna load in and go find some random you know some random encounters with some random different party members just to experiment Mm -hmm. and try to try to find new things i mean does does do that do they do leveling for all those people in such a way that people don't fall behind i have no idea because i've only just got more than six which again that's your party limit so i think i've only got one guy in the reserves everybody else is the only thing because like otherwise like whoever you don't whoever you pick early on it's like well that's them because everyone else is going to be level two these guys are level 20 i i have to imagine either it's pretty easy to catch them up or yes there is something like a fail safe XP share situation. Yeah. Hmm. But um it keeps it pretty simple with gear. Basically, um everybody has a head slot and a body slot for armor. Um everybody's weapon is innate, so like they just have their weapon and then you can upgrade it. So make you can basically just make it stronger, but you're never gonna be finding weapons for all one hundred and eight characters because that would be madness. Yeah. Um and then the armor is pretty generic it seems. I mean there's a I actually have I just recruited like a wolf. So obviously the wolf isn't going to wear a helmet, um, but aside from that, pretty much anybody can wear like. You don't tell that wolf what he can and can't do. <laughs> I, I would never dare. He's very fierce. And then, um, uh, then you can hold gear. So like, if you want somebody to have a potion, they have to be holding it in battle. They can't just pull it out of your stock. But huh. you can also hold things like defensive items that'll increase your you know your defense stat. So you kind of have to make that decision of do I want to have a lot of like utility items or do I want to be like more prepared to take damage or whatever yeah um yeah but that's that's it and it's 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 old school and i'm playing like the original version are are you able to play this on a console or is this you had to emulate this i am emulating it on a vita because i'm a sneaky sneak but you can (laughs) buy it on a vita you can buy it on vita uh psp or ps3 those are all legitimate ways that you can purchase the um like probably for like ten dollars if i had to guess off of the psn store Okay, I do not uh, have any of gotta... those, but because I I am intrigued, <laughs> this is, this does sound like a, a pretty fun game. Yeah, but it's a PS One game, so it would be super easy to emulate if you wanted to do so. Other and last interesting fact: this is a Konami game, so in a time where you know Square and Enix and a couple other people were the the dominant Bandai Namco were the dominant names JRPGs, Konami was you know trying their hand at. And again, this is a really popular game. Yeah, um, it's got its niche though. But so with the reason that I don't, so I said it was because of the podcast. It was another reason they uh, recently um, a Kickstarter, one of the mo- one of the most, not the most, but one of the most successful video game Kickstarters recently just ended for uh, the spiritual successor to this game because they made like a bunch of them. But Konami doesn't care about making video games anymore, as most people know. And so the original got, team gotta chase created that slot machine money. You gotta the pachinkos and all the spas and whatnot. But the original creative teams and minds behind uh, specifically this one, because this is the most beloved one, 
are going to make their own game very much in the style of um uh sorry what's octopath traveler so the graphics will look a lot like that oh nice and i liked yeah. octopath traveler's graphics i didn't i wasn't a huge fan of its gameplay and it got really boring after a while yeah. i can't believe i sunk as much time into it as i did but it, it was fun what i had but it just it peters out for sure all right so that's what i played the most of um i kept playing some more ghost of tsushima i finally got to act three that game is so long <laughs> i can't believe i'm still not done with it oh it's been almost two months too long you're just not a very good samurai i'm sorry I'm not. I, I'm not. Because and what happens is I'll 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 get bored <clears throat> playing on the easier mode, and then I'll turn on lethal mode, which is really fun but very difficult. Because if you make a mistake, you're, you're done. done. You're done. And so you'll end up playing the same really small encounter like four times, which you know t- anything times four starts to build up. Um, I finished my la- first long quest line. So if you had been listening to prior episodes or you've been playing Ghost of Shima the side stories are done in these like parts and most of them are pretty long anywhere between like seven and nine parts and i finally finished one and it was mostly satisfying i felt there was like it kind of did this little twisty thing at the end but because i had been like doing them kind of like piecemeal throughout the rest of the game because it kind of forces you to stop at some point and finish the main story before you can continue with the side quests um it it was nice like because you just it's this like little aside with this side character and you get to know their problem and their personality. Um, I don't think it needed to be broken up into nine parts. I think that was one, like, you know, three too many. I know. Cause they're all so small though. Like sometimes they would literally just be like, run to this camp, kill these guys, have some exposition and you're done. I'm like, you could have just, you could have just cut this one out. You didn't need to do this. I didn't have to ride my horse a mile in this direction just to have a five minute like encounter. Um, and the other problem I have with him is that the main character, Jin Sakai, um, he has a personality like that you experience when you're playing the game. That personality disappears though, when you're playing these side quests and he basically becomes this sounding board for the other character to Hmm. like get their thoughts and emotions. Like he becomes whatever they need him to be. And it's very like at odds with other time. Like, it's like, he'll say something like, that's not what you would have said over here in this other quest. And then he'll he'll do a different quest with a different character. He's basically just there to kind of be like a helpful antagonist. Like they'll, he's there to kind of like push back against them because they're all having a problem and yeah. they all want to solve it in a very violent <laughs> or destructive way. And he's like, no, don't do that. And like with this grieving widow slash mother, for instance, he's being firm but consoling. And then with this kind of hard headed old teacher who's like, they're butting heads i'm like pick a lane man which would like who is this character because i don't recognize him because then you'll go do the main story and then he's totally different there too so it's kind of i wonder I if like their if their development teams for like the side quest versus the main stories didn't have you know we're, we're working like in parallel so there wasn't a ton of crossover or something yeah maybe um, it's yeah. like god uh i no you go ahead first Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. I, I obviously, having played a lot of Skyrim, I've, I've read, yeah, it's a lot of like its quests, which really aren't, you know, it's smaller quests are not nearly as involved. It sounds like as these, but what you find out is it like, you know, Bethesda essentially had the like, all right, so your job this week is to make a quest in this area, mm-hmm. go. And so it was just kind of like, all right, well, I'm gonna pick this location and kind of design it out and build a quest for it. Um, so yeah, a lot of those operate independently, but yeah, that works better in Skyrim where it's it, it is. Yeah, you know, it, it, it much more of a, a, a you know paint yourself onto your character, pick pick responses for your character, and if they give you you know have general guidelines on like you shall have these at least these type of responses, it it works just fine. But I wonder right. if, if there was some lack of communication going on there. Possible. Um, it would have been a huge like mistake on their part to make that like like it's game's not big enough to need that you know like yeah. there there should have been one team in charge of all the story or at least had their you know the, the approval of it all um i in general like the story is not bad and from a higher level of just this is a story about pride and honor and you know defending against the foreign invader and such it's very good and i'm enjoying it but but ever like the individual moments are delivered often very hacky like it's not a very like especially because unfortunately i had played um the last of us part two right before this 
and there's a glaring difference in the quality between cinematics like the, the like the story points and moments like it's just night and day and that's not to say anything bad about this game as much as it is to say that's just how good naughty dog did theirs yeah but it's still noticeable so but that's I mean, hopefully sorry, i'll be done next say, week you, you think you'll be done with that one in another week i think so if i had to guess act three is probably going to be the shortest one um i only have a few more of the side quests to wrap up and then i'm just gonna barrel through straight through the the remaining um story quests and then and i'll be able to roll credits on it nice and then I played a little bit more Divinity Original Sin 2. I'm still enjoying it. Um, it's a messy game. Like, its its systems are too complicated. They're too obscure. And I talked about this the last time. But, like, it's just going to be a, a repeating theme as I go through it, especially on the Switch, because it's hard to do the things with the controller versus clicking on them with a the mouse. Um, have, you, have you tried playing on it and handheld? Like, it, it, does, does it have touchscreen support? It does not. Uh, That's all uh, I play it on. I okay. almost never play docked, so... Yeah, so maybe uh, that's because that, that would have been an easy way for them to kind of allow you to replicate the mouse for that type of stuff would then give you a touchscreen. Uh, I, I will say I didn't actually try. I'm going to assume the touchscreen is not available because it almost never is, but it could, and I could have been proven wrong, and that would be really cool. Um, I, I, I await your correction next week. I can't wait to give it. <laughs> but, like, so the crux of Divinity is it's, it's combat system slash um, the way you build your character. And basically, it's a you can be anything you want and any combination of anything you want. But they, it's I don't know. It's it's without knowing, and I could go look it up online, but I don't really want to. But like, I don't know what happens if I pump a bunch of points into pyrokinetic, for example, which is basically your fire mage. Like, is that a waste of time? Do I get anything really good out of it? Should I spread myself thinner? Is, is like, there going to be a, a red cloud. dragon later that's immune to fire? exactly should i put some in the ice stuff or not because <laughs> like there's no way of like there's no classes they just they don't exist you have archetypes and then you can you can be a jack of all trades or a master of uh, master of none or you can so like super specialize but like i just don't know like how good it is to do one or the other or should i always be like should all my characters have a little bit of everything it's and and i found i finally got to the place where i can respec and you can do it for free, and it seems like as long as I get back to this ship where this little device is, I can do it whenever I want. So that'll be nice to be able to yeah. like experiment, but I literally spent like two hours yesterday fiddling with it. And not in like a bad way, like I was having fun, but I also spent two hours doing it. So it's kind of like, that was a long time just to respec. And again, not because it was hard or it wasn't fun, I was like, I was just thinking, you know, I was mulling it over like you would a D&D character. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I was going to say to you too, is I mean, this is a, this is a CRPG which plays mm-hmm. like a, you know, a, a you know, most of them tend to play like d and I would imagine that you'd probably be best served, not that you couldn't do it, but you'd be best served by having, you know, your various characters take on, you know, certain archetypes and playing them that yeah. way. I, I have to, I, I cannot imagine that they'd make a game where that was not at least a, an effective strategy. Not to say that you, yeah, they, they didn't make the game capable of being played a bunch of different ways. Yeah, for sure. I, I will... I will probably look up like at least what abilities are available for every class so I can at least kind of get an idea like do I want to put a bunch of points in the necromancy or is that a waste of time for this character at least and do I want to put it on the other character because I as much fun as it was last night to do that I don't want to do that like every time I sit down to play I don't want to be like always going back and respec and be like oh nope I wanted to tweak it here and for the most part I don't have to because I again I I dropped the difficulty down um on this on my return to the game and it's finally it is a sweet spot i find like i'm getting just the right amount of challenge but i didn't also have to like max like i didn't have to play min max on all my characters and their stats so nice good stuff good stuff but i i will i will appreciate the somewhat more structured um systems of D D when Baldur's Gate 3 comes out and i'm i'm a fighter or i'm a druid or my party is this and yeah there's choices in that too but they're still not going to start doing something else they're always going to be a druid they're always going to be a fighter yeah can't wait all right i don't have anything else i played i don't think let me see nope that was it so we have a do you want to do the topic of the show that you came up with or you want to do your the listener question you wrote in on 
What was my listener question? <laughs> I forget. I had it up I, earlier. I, I, I remember the joke the question in my listener question. I don't remember. I do too. <laughs> It was. Uh, I don't have all my email links to this computer. I do. I got it right here. Question is, if you could pick a game to get someone into playing video games, what would it be? That is a good one that would probably require a little thought ahead of time. Yeah, uh, I, am, I am not prepared to answer that question. All right, we'll save that for next week. That's fine. That's a good question. Though. We'll save that for next week. So, topic of the show, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, specifically with the um, the Mario Kart live stuff is gimmicks in video games special mechanics that you see pop up we saw a lot of that with the previous generation when the we took the world by storm with motion controls we're starting to see a little bit of that again from nintendo on the switch with labo and this new mario kart thing and then some people would consider it um certainly not jason co-host of this podcast but i kind of do at this point because it hasn't panned out well is vr virtual reality is not doing the things that people want it to or the things it promised at the speed of which they want. So it can kind of potentially go into that gimmick bucket too. So Sean, what's your experience with gimmicks uh, in games, whether that's an, whether that's a hardware thing on the outside or within the, the game design itself? So, I mean, when it comes to the hardware stuff, I, I was probably like burnt by Virtual Boy. <laughs> uh, so I, I can't say, I mean, I bought a Wii U, but I also bought a Wii U knowing that I'd still be able to play games on it. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm trying to think the last, the last real gimmick that I bought I mean, that, that I enjoyed, which would probably be like the rumble pack back when like star Fox 64 came out. That's um, a safe one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was nice. Yeah. And it's, and it's become, it's become an industry standard that your controller has to vibrate. Until you realize I, hate it. That I don't, it, that I don't it, like it. Yeah, until you realize it destroys battery life, and you're just like, nah, turn that off. Don't need that. Um, you know, the only game I keep it on is um, Animal Crossing because fishing is impossible without it. Interesting. I, I haven't yeah. played Animal Crossing. Um, yeah, but given the hardware stuff, I mean, I would, I would like to try uh, VR at some point. Um, obviously, my Skyrim addiction indicates that I that I will have to try Skyrim VR at some point, and then I'm probably going to run into like an Inception problem where I'm going to like turn to VR to live my life, and my <laughs> non VR life will will, will 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 be the thing that I'm just trying to get through. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, and, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I guess I mean the, I guess at the end of the day, the Switch in its own way is kind of a gimmick. But it, it, I, I feel like the Switch was kind of a you know, it was really a, a merging of the console and the handhelds, which were both proven and successful technologies. Um, yeah, I mean, a gimmick is a gimmick until it becomes you know, yeah, adopted. That's, that's 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 the hard thing talking about this too. It's like you know, three D graphics, I guess, could have been called a gimmick, except they're the golden standard nowadays. Yeah, I can't. I mean, well, that's not true. The, if they were the golden standard. They were the only standard to do two to do two D graphics in a certain time and age. Um, would have been a suicide thing. Yeah. You know, like no one would have like taken your game seriously. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons the Sega Saturn failed was they built that console to be the best two D console ever, and then everyone mm-hmm. jumped to three D and they tried to be able to do three D with the exception of like Knights. They just couldn't. They couldn't adapt fast enough. Right. And uh, it's such a shame. And a lot of PS1 games that came out and couldn't or didn't want to do 3D suffered again because people are just like, well, why? I have 3D version of you over here. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, what about like games, though? Like what kind of games and series? This was yeah. Have- so we, like we touched upon, you know, talking about Mario is really where, where I thought about this from from the, you know, the game standpoint. And we even talked about with like mm-hmm. Pokemon, like the. All the things like the mega evolutions and the and the and the mm. and the two creature battle and all that. It's like how much of this you, you just you know, you're tacking on something um for 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 what? I mean to me Mar- Mario's a, is I mean Nintendo is probably the, the biggest culprit of this. I mean you look at you know Super Mario Bros. Um obviously two, as we talked about, Super Mario Bros. two doesn't really count, but Super Mario Bros. three is really very much the same. It's just got it's got new items. I mean, it's got the suits, but it's it's mostly just a refinement of Super Mario Bros. Super Mario World, yeah, it has Yoshi, but it's not like Yoshi became this like Rose of requirement to play the game. It was an additional aspect of the game. Mm-hmm. Super Mario 64 added the hats, which were really just items. And th- but then you kind of get into now I'm playing Sunshine and I got the water pack, and the water pack is what the entire game's all about. And then I'm playing 
um, Galaxy, which you know, deals with the gravity and all that, which is probably maybe a little more successful than Sunshine, or was more successful than Sunshine was. Uh, but then you get to to Odyssey, and it's now Cappy. And it's like part of me is like, just just give me give me Super Mario sixty four done modern. You know, to give me give me a game that is just a Mario game. Give me give me Fire Flowers. Yeah, I think I think mm-hmm. I think what uh, Galaxy two actually had the return of Fire Flower Mario. Um, yes. really, like when you picked up it for limited times, but like, give me a Mario where I, I have classic Mario abilities done in the modern air. Um, yeah, I mean, like Legend of Zelda is the same thing. You had, you had Twilight or Ocarina of Time, and then you had, I mean, what was the, I mean, Majora's Mask is just, as we talked about last week, its own kind of unique insanity. But then, uh, I mean, Wind Waker, I would argue maybe not as bad of a culprit, but then, uh, you know, with, with really sailing being its thing, but then Twilight Princess is literally, hey, what if in Ocarina of Time you were a wolf part of the time? <laughs> um, Skyward Sword was the motion controls, uh, and then and, I mean, and then you get to Breath of the Wild, which is just a complete change, really reimagining in the gameplay of the series. But does um, Breath of the Wild have a gimmick? If Breath of the Wild has a gimmick, it's probably the weapon de- degra- degradation. That's good call. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which I, I know a lot of people didn't like, and I understand why people didn't like it. I I, I personally I. I I didn't mind it. I don't think I'd go as far as to say that I liked it, but I didn't. It, yeah, it, didn't, it didn't bother me. Like it was like, all right, this, this. I understand why this needs to exist for this game to work the way that it does. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, you know, how, how much of it's like, just give me Ocarina of Time, but done modern, but maybe mm-hmm. not because Ocarina of Time is already that done for Link to the Past. So yeah, you know, it's. I, I feel like it's tough because you know game, games need to grow. Um, mm-hmm. But like, I don't like it. You know, like Super Mario World to me is a perfect example of a game that grew. You know, we got Yoshi, we got we got some iconic things coming into the series, but they weren't they weren't the they weren't the center point of the game. The center point of the game was still the basic mechanics of Mario. Uh, yes, very good. That's a very apt explanation. Like power ups were a thing, and yeah. Yoshi can essentially just be considered a very evolved form of a power up. Um. But like you said, like you could beat that game and experience every ounce of it as mini Mario. You could you don't even need a mushroom. Like right. I mean, obviously it's much harder then, but you don't need any of it. Yeah, and then compared well, to Sunshine, just, where the the water pack is the game. You know, yeah, the, the normal Mario stuff is essentially gone in that game. Um, yeah, and that's uh, a lot of people who don't like it do definitely. Um, they definitely don't like Flood. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, the main I, I, I feel like it's just you, you know, N- Nintendo. In between, every so often having these these absolutely fantastic games, it seems like just kind of you know. The, I guess the same way they do to their consoles, they tack on something. Um, yeah, they they tack on a mechanic to 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 shake it up. I'm mm-hmm. not sure that's the best way to do it. I mean, I, I, I I'm trying to think of a of a Nintendo franchise that doesn't do this because you you Metroid? list a bunch. Oh yeah, I was gonna get to there, but you list yeah. a bunch of because Metroid is probably the only answer because you list a bunch of you know because then it's a fine line slash circular logic of like what is a mechanic versus a gimmick versus like something that gets adopted into the series, and you listed a bunch of Mario ones and most of those are not bad with maybe the exception of Flood being a bit too heavy handed, but Cappy's great. Yeah, the cer- the like, planets I, I, in the yeah, game and and and, and Odyssey's great and also but like. Mm-hmm. They were also they were there one game. It's not like like Yoshi has become a staple of Mario. Not not that he's shown up in every game since, right. but he is like I highly doubt Cappy is going to be a reoccurring character in future Mario games. That's a shame because he's great. Um, I guess yeah. the gimmick there is less Cappy and more the possession thing because Cappy as yeah. it relates That's- to the jumping and the platforming is amazing and I, it's just it's just a new kind of way to traverse the levels. But it's the specifically it's the the possession of the enemies. And the yeah, items I think, and I think stuff, that's the yeah. part I consider more gimmicky than yeah. I mean, throw, yeah. throwing the cap and being able to jump off the cap and all that was cool, and I and I think it added yeah. to the core Mario gameplay. The possession was this completely different system. That's like, all right, yeah, I guess I'll go. You'll possess definitely not see Goombas. that again. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that got old quick too. Like it's a gimmick, and it, I think the reason we can call that specific part a gimmick is because you get tired of it. At least I did. Like. And, and Odyssey, and I don't want to get too on a tangent here, but Odyssey in general becomes too formulaic. You go to a place and you know outside of a couple very unique um, moons, 
There's going to be a place with a stack, like you said, a stack of Goombas. There's going to be a place where I have to do this, 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 and this, and this. Kick a rock here, do this and that. And then I can just copy and paste those actions to every single world with some slight differences. And I'm going to find a moon. And this just becomes kind of like, all right, the mystery is gone. Because in those, especially the ones that don't require platforming, like the the, the more like investigative ones. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, that's a bad gimmick. But yeah, Metroid. Metroid doesn't, Metroid has its differences, obviously. Uh, all games have new additions and changes, but like, I wouldn't call anything. We'll 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 focus on Prime, uh, one, two, and three, I guess. Yeah. Um, it, there's st- there's still Metroid games through and through. Sam- I mean, Samus is going to get her collectibles and her upgrades, but she's going to shoot beams out of her arm cannon. <laughs> she's going to fight Ridley, and that's about it. Like, yeah. they're always going to have well, that. And, and then so. yeah, even like so, Metro Prime three, uh, you you have the Whatever. What's the super suit mode that actually slowly kills you that you can use? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's Metroid Prime Three Corruption. Is it? I don't remember what it's called though. Yeah, but so like, you, I don't know if the you, suit. You you have that, and like, but again, yeah, an additional thing, but wasn't you, you never had to use that to beat the game. Yeah, my, right. minus some story I, elements, but it wasn't like it wasn't like Samus must defeat her enemies in the corrupted mode. You know, like it, yeah, right. it's, I I could play ninety nine percent of that game minus I think like the final boss fight. I did it. And you had to do it in corruption mode because it was kind of story, but you still fought like regular mm-hmm. Samus. You could play right. that game like Metroid Prime One with pretty much just you know the same items. You had you had your missiles and and, and you know, so on. I guess we misspoke. Metroid Prime 2 actually revolves heavily around its gimmick, which is the light and dark world. The entire game is literally based around oh, yeah. where like, so you can go based on that. I think I think I only played the first hour of Metroid Prime 2. I did. I've never touched it, so that's probably why I forgot about <laughs> it. So, okay. Metroid Prime 2 has a huge gimmick, one that I don't think a lot of people like. Um, and there you go. So, gimmicks are bad. Don't do gimmick yeah. <laughs> stuff. I do, but I also appreciate innovation it's like i said earlier it's it's yeah, I want, you're right it's it's this weird circular like i want you to add to and evolve the series but it's like some of this stuff like like flood there there is no way that flood was going to become a staple of mario it was mm-hmm. it was a thing for that game it was and then it was going to be gone like and that's yeah, I, I like to think that as you evolve the series, it's, it's you're adding something that I'm not saying think that those things will be around forever or that other things won't fall away. But I would like to think that every time you add something to the game, it's with the intent of, especially on the on these 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 franchises that that's going to build the franchise up into the future. That's what makes Pokemon fans so mad, right? You brought it up a moment ago. Mega Evolution was a very much. Um well-received thing people love mega evolution because what it does is it it adds another layer of evolution and evolutions are fun but it's dynamic in that it and temporary in that it only lasts in a battle and then it also gives you the chance to um create new pokemon out of existing pokemon and make them better so like for the one of the um because mega wasn't something you could apply to everything but you could uh, there were a lot of choices and one of them was Beedrill. Beedrill is a trash Pokemon that you're only supposed to have at the beginning of the game anyway. So it's just like, that's just kind of how it is. But there was a Mega Beedrill and not only did he look amazing, he was useful again because all Megas get that huge stat boost to kind of make them on the like, you know, on par with each other. Yeah. And so it was just a fun way for people to take their favorites who had just kind of sucked for so long and either play them in late game if you're just playing single player or, you know, there's a huge competitive scene in Pokemon and Mega Evolutions helped people play things like Beedrill in, in, in competitive Pokemon. But then, but then they mean, dropped is, it and like, say, they got rid it of it. Is it still around? I, I'm pretty sure it's gone now. It, it So it was introduced in X and Y, which was Gen 6. And then Gen 7 had it as like kind of an afterthought. It was not the main like crux because it was the main crux of it was this it was like literally the story of of X and Y like fed into the mega evolution and vice versa. Um, and but it was still around in the next one for Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And then they got rid of it as far as I know for Sword and Shield and they replaced it with something dumber in my opinion, but more flexible. So they call it dynamaxing that's what it is and so the pokemon just gets huge like godzilla sized and some pokemon change their forms and get different abilities as a result so it's essentially a mega evolution but not really and yeah. but it can be applied to any pokemon so it's it's kind of an equalizing unifying factor but it's also just not the same 
And I and I should probably come up with examples so we're not just ripping on Nintendo throughout the entirety of this, but No, we're gonna rip on Nintendo some more <laughs> because they do this with Paper Mario too. So the first two Paper Mario games are amazing. They are spiritual successors to Super Mario RPG. They're like cute little It's so good. We should do an entire episode where we just talk about that game. I want, I want Mallow back in a Mario game. Uh, I want Mallow too. Not Gino. He can stay there. I don't know why people love Gino so much. He no. sucks. I agree. Stupid puppet. <laughs> Stupid puppet. Anyway, uh, first two Paper Mario's great. And then they stripped it of everything that it was for the next one, Super Paper Mario. And they ga- they turned, they made the whole game revolve around this gimmick where now you're not fighting battles anymore. You're just, you know, you're hopping and running like classic mario except now you can flip the world and see a different perspective and then they did sticker star on the 3ds which was all about like using stickers as items in combat and that was literally the entire game was based around that then they had color splash which was like sticker star but it was color instead of stickers and then it just keeps going every new paper mario game is clearly going to be here's an idea we're going to literally base everything around it and hopefully it's good uh, but well, most of the time, it's not going to be. I feel like that goes back to what I said earlier, that like, you know, Paper Mario is one of those second tier Nintendo I, you know, series that mm-hmm. gets handed yeah. off to the new guys and, hey, do something interesting with this. And so they keep they right. keep almost trying to reinvent the wheel. And it's like you have you have dedicated fans of Paper Mario who just want a Paper Mario game. Yeah, there's a lot of baggage there as far as like why that's not happening anymore. Some people, I mean, basically the numbers show that Paper Mario is doing just fine without its, you know, 2D yeah. or without its turn-based combat and lots of stories about like, you know, the higher ups who aren't necessarily working directly on the game but don't want them messing with the formula that Mario cuz Mario is so guarded and becomes more so with every passing year unfortunately. Yeah. He's becoming like the Mickey he, I mean not becoming he is the Mickey Mouse of Nintendo. And there's only so much you can do with Mickey as a result and now there's, you know, slowly there's only so much you can do with Mario as a result. And that's just the way it is. Do we have any non-Nintendo yeah. examples? <laughs> uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you who doesn't Final, have gimmicks. Final, Final Fantasy VIII had that whole infusion system that never showed up again. Junctioning, that's what it was there called. It and yes, no, that was a, that was a sure departure. That, sure that, that broke the game, too. So It could break the game. People over... Um, they blow it out of proportion. Like, A, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to junction that way and you're not going to break the game. You're, it's just going to be really hard for you, actually. And even if you know what you're doing, you have to go out of your way to do it, which is kind of the, what true for any JRPG. If you know how to get strong in a JRPG and you go out of your way to get strong, you are going to be strong. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you be strong? Because <laughs> you can do the same things in Final Fantasy VII with Materia. You get a you get a broken combo, you overlevel a little bit, and everything becomes a joke except for the final two secret bosses. Like, duh. People are mean to my one of my favorite games, and they need to stop it. <laughs> uh, Love that game. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a little concerned that the the next uh, Halo game is going to have a grappling hook. It just seems it does. I it know, does have one, but I'm concerned oh, about I it. See. Like. Concerned about seems, it. Can 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 I see then? You know, whatever comes after Halo Infinite not having gra- a grappling hook. Yes, and it's like, well, wait, where did Master Chief's grappling hook go? Why does he not have it anymore? He thought it was stupid. Did, did, did he was just did using Ridley it? Ridley smack him in the beginning of the game, and he lost all his power ups. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, people are much more angry about sprint being in the game than grappling hooks. So I don't, I don't I mean, understand it. But you know, I went back and I played some of the halos recently and like mm-hmm. playing those games nowadays. And again, probably all, all after playing Titanfall two, where I am, I am, I am like the flash. I'm speed incarnate. Those games are very slow. Um, yeah. you, I, that, that game needs a little bit. Yeah. You know, like I think, I think halo five did a good job with the sprint and then the little bit of like the boost you could do that to get that game a little bit of mobility. Cause halo is very much about being kind of close to your enemies like it's a lot of that game is meant to be like get up like get up in your enemy's face and which is why like the mm-hmm. melee is such a powerful attack in those games um, right i love that that's a great like it's a really nice thing to have it's, and it's similar to doom you know um speaking of doom can you sprint in doom i can't remember no but you're just super fast in doom like he's just he's yeah unbelievable. that's like, right he's just his basic running speed is like like most people's all-out sprint yeah, constant sprint. And then there's the speed boost, which makes you go even faster, which I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the, the point of game, I think that, that does this, re- that does this like iter- you know, iteration really well, I think would be maybe Portal 2. 
Yeah, here's everything you love okay. about Portal. I never here's played a, two. Here's a couple extra like wrinkles that add to the game, and odds are good that if, if they if, if a port if, if Valve ever got over their fear of the number three and a Portal three came out, you would see many of those same mechanics <laughs> brought back with additional things that would add additional complexions and wrinkles to them. Yeah, but we won't because Valve will never make a number three. No, I won't. They'll make something else, and that they just won't call it three. Uh, um, I will say that as much as I like it when you know when they when they innovate and add instead of just gimmick to gimmick to gimmick, it does make a heavy game. That because so, so that's kind of going back to Pokemon. Part of Pokemon's problem is that for the longest time they just kind of kept everything every single time. <laughs> Yeah, and they weren't trimming the fat, and so it just became mechanically overbearing. Um, and they, we were just talking about something that did that too. Oh well, I forgot. Um, but it can be kind of like, uh, what? Do you, at what point do you like kind of reboot things without actually rebooting? But then, it, but then it's like, well, where'd all my stuff go? And then you kind of paint yourself into a a different kind of corner. <laughs> Yeah, and you have to like decide when do I get rid of all these things. MMOs have that problem, specifically usually like content though. Like you'll have a game that's been out fifteen, twenty years now, almost with World of Warcraft. What are you gonna do with all these baby zones? Do we like what's the point of half of these places where people can just level up in different ways and just skip them entirely? Like they're just they're not technically taking up any space, and yet the game is bloated because of them. And there's a lot of little systems and items that exist for quests that no one completes anymore, and it just becomes all this dead weight that you carry around with you forever. But then it's like, what's an elegant way to trim that? I know Destiny recently um, started just kind of like closing off older content. They put it in the vault. <laughs> they literally yeah. created a vault. Oh, yeah. so De- and Destiny's they're just going to like a big story event that's basically going to destroy or mm-hmm. you know the darkness in the game's going to come and take over retake over part of the ga- yeah you know, the the solar system and therefore your character right. won't be able to go back there. But along with that they're also retiring a bunch of like weapons and whatnot because and I'm, and I'm sure World of Warcraft ran this. It's like you eventually realize, like, if I don't retire certain weapons and those weapons can keep coming forward to new power levels, it's like there's going to be three weapons that everyone uses because they are the best weapons. Um, right. So. Not quite the same problem, but I, I know what you mean. Like, it's, it is it is the same idea, basically, with, I, with other items in inventory. It's just like you got you to get rid of it. You got to retire. Or no one's going to move on. No one's going to try something different unless you force them to. And then, then, then you get on to the Nintendo. It's like, I guess there's just no... It's different. There's tastes for different seasons. I say, there, there's probably no, there's there's no winning this. I mean, yeah, I, right. I, I, I agree. At the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I mean, if, if you sat there and you made Ocarina of Time after Ocarina of Time after Ocarina of Time, yeah, and you kept changing the story up a little bit, eventually it's gonna be like, dude, do something new. Um, yeah, yeah. As good as they might refine Ocarina of Time, but but yeah, if you sit there and just keep adding on, you know, flood after flood after flood to Mario, it's like. You know, this isn't a Mario anymore. This, this, this is, this is, you know, uh, this is two, you know, tool, tool of the year that, that I'm getting in this Mario game or tool, tool of the decade, depending upon, yeah, how often yeah, you get for Mario sure. Not here, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, walking that line is tough. Like, I, I, what, what I like to see the jump, like the, the cap throw and the jumping aspects of Cappy back just as kind of Mario's regular ball cap. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I'd also like to see like Metal Mario make a return. Um, oh yeah please uh but like he doesn't have to but yeah that's no there's you're right there's a line there and i don't quite know where it is you know it's like you know breath of the wild like you know many things i love about the game i hope i hope the, you know the, the paraglider and all that all come back but could i could i get the hook shot back to you guys really really like the hook oh, shot <laughs> that'd be so cool dude yeah for like, some kind of like maybe not the hook shot but like a grappling hook of some kind since it Especially that makes that, more know, sense. I, I really kept waiting, you know, almost expecting it. Because I, I, I did very little reading on Breath of the Wild besides basically seeing, like, one thing on it. Like, give me the game now. How much money do you desire? Um, and I kept being <laughs> like, all right, cool. I got this climbing tunic. You know, it'd be, you know, it'd really, really make life a lot easier to climb a hook shot. And then, and then there never was a yeah. hook shot. And I was like, oh, I really, nope. really thought that attachment for my Sheikah slate was going to show up at some point. That would have been really cool. Um. But yeah, like God of War, because I can't not talk about God of War. 
introduce two really you, you know this it was a bit of keep a, a streak for like how many episodes in a row you you and it's probably 28 but how many times do you mention god of war in a podcast no i i went one without at least because i made a comment on the next episode about how i didn't talk about god of war <laughs> um but like the series did a you know a soft reboot of sorts and mm-hmm. so they were able to do some new stuff and they added two huge things the leviathan axe Yep. which is one of the greatest inventions of all time in gaming. And then yeah. Atreus, who has this, who is essentially just a weapon, but, you know, obviously he's a character in the story, but, like, you know, woven in so well, and he's part of the skill tree and all that. Like, But the next one, like, I personally would be absolutely fine if they didn't really change anything whatsoever. I'm not saying yeah. I don't want them to. I'm just saying I'd be fine with it. But, like, where... Is there room for anything new when you have something as complex as the combat that already exists? Like, what do you do that doesn't make it seem busy? Well, like, I don't even that's, know. That's maybe why Nintendo runs into this problem more so than than other franchises. Is Nintendo's yeah. games are built on their gameplay? They, yeah, you know, like they have stories, but there's the stories is not usually the strong point of a Nintendo game. And yeah, mm-hmm. and, and don't get me wrong. You know, I love the environmental storytelling, especially of Breath of the Wild, but like. Nintendo games are about, they're much more about their gameplay than probably their point. stories. Whereas, you know, God of War, how, yeah, how do you make God of War better? You just give me another really top-notch story that takes it to the next level and lets me, like, rip Thor's head off. I'm yeah. going to I'm, I'm be happy. Like, yes. Um, yeah. All right, you heard it. You heard it, uh, Corey Balrog. Let me rip Thor's head off. Let Sean rip it off. I'll take out Odin. <laughs> no, you, you gotta save Odin for the, the end of the trilogy. I don't want a trilogy, man. I'm tired of trilogies. Just give me my, give me my finished story. I want him to speed things up in that next you, one. You, you've bought into like Final Fantasy VII remake part, you know, twenty at this point. So, yeah, but I don't actually expect that to come out. So, <laughs> uh, no, I just want to go play God of War, right? That's, that's how I end every one of these podcasts. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go play God of War. Uh, we had a great time talking. Sean, thank you so much for filling in. Hey, no problem. Um, I, know that, I know that Jason appreciates it. I appreciate it. Uh, this episode will be going up later this week. Uh, not as usual Monday time, but we'll get it up as soon as possible. Um, and, you know, we didn't expect to have him on so soon, but he might be back again before we know it. So who knows? Uh, just keep your ears and your eyes uh, peeled for Robot Sean. Uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 suck. This is to make sure that Jason was listening all the way till the end. Um, how does he end it? Uh, you know, he says it every single uh, week. We will try, but we are never. But, yeah, but he's always to say before that. What does he uh, say before uh, that? <laughs> You all have a great week. We will try, but we are never free to play. Got it. Suck it, Jason. (laughs)